ask and ye shall receive, Ozzy. We have arrived. Sorry for the slight delay. Anyway, welcome back, guys. It's time to talk about Discovery, I guess. Hi, Sam. How you doing? Hello, Stuart. This is our first time back doing an episode review. It has been a little while. As a Discovery been. review, I can't even remember the last time. It was that long ago. Yeah, our last new Trek review was... Lower Decks, of course, episode 10, which was uh, five months ago, November 3rd. November 3rd. Who would have thought we had almost half a year without New Trek, having gone Damn. pretty much New Trek every day, every day, well, every week for not a full year, but a substantial portion of a year. Goodness. Yeah. How the tides have turned. Yeah. Oh, we have nine weeks, because, of course, they prepared two episodes. And then another pause. No Stranger Worlds until next year. Yep. Lower Deck sometime, I assume, September again, probably. Another break? Yeah. And just and just to clarify, today we're doing episode one, The Red Directive. Just... We'll be doing episode two, a live review on Tuesday. Also, we've seen both. We've reviewed both in our own personal ways. Uh, your first reaction, our edit reviews. We have these expressions. Um, I'm sure we're going to mention episode two conceptually. You know, people know both. Doesn't mean we're going to review it, just, uh, you know, these episodes yes. don't exist in vacuums, so, you know, I'm sure we'll, we'll make mention, yeah. etc. Uh, and Mark Lawrence throws ooh. in $10 right off the hop. Amazing. The two ships hitting the ground to make that counter wave reminded me of the trash ball rocket from Futurama, where they made another trash ball rocket to counter <laughs> yeah. the original one coming back to <gasps> Earth. Yeah. God, that's, that's a reference and a half. I think it was also not only the shockwave, but also the shields of the ships stopping all of the stuff. Like it's just yeah, like yeah. a wall, essentially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. it was a um, <clears throat> big and powerful force field because yeah. you know two starships, a lot of energy. It should be at yeah. least and mega future ships. You know, the, the, yeah. Another yeah, two dollars discount data is very discounted. <laughs> and Hossie throws two dollars and says hashtag long live Fred. Hashtag justice Fred for Fred. Yeah. We've got Zaheel back. Maybe we can get Fred back. <laughs> I mean, we got... we got, That was us, Stuart. We got Zaheel. We forced them to reshoot oh. eight months later. I was joking. But we Maybe we'll see it. him this season. That, that'd be nice. I mean, he he was their first hello to the future. I mean, yeah, he should be, right? He, he, was, yeah. he was the lad that got him into the, into the world of tomorrow. Exactly. All right, so I'm going to start sharing on so, many of the nets. Uh, see you in a mo. Go share. All right. It's like a brain. So, guys, this is my chance to talk to you guys and say hit that like button. We have 33 of you here, which is awesome. 21 likes, which is also awesome, but we can do better. We can hit 30 likes, so hit that like button if you haven't already. Uh, don't cons don't forget to super chat in. Uh, Mark, uh, uh, Olivia, and Ozzy, thank you so much for those. We really appreciate those. They do help out the channel immensely and us as well. And, uh, yeah, we do read them all, so... Look, super chat in help us out in any way you can hitting that like button is the easiest way but you can also make sure you're subscribed to the channel click that bell notification icon to all so you don't miss any of our content we do a few breakdown videos from this these episodes which will be out next week and this weekend so by all means check those out and join us for the, the live for episode two on tuesday because that's the way it's going to work it would be monday but you know we're having a solar eclipse which We'll be able to see another one for 300 years. That's this perfect in our sky over where I am. So, yeah, unfortunately, it's, it's at its zenith point around the time we do the live here. So I don't really want to miss that for a live. It's a, it's a one in a lifetime event. So, hey, I'm going to do that instead. So Tuesday, we'll have our review of episode two. So by, by all means, tune into that. Um, but yes, um, Everybody that joined me for the live first reaction last night, thank you so much. I appreciate that also. And, uh, yeah, also you can hit the join button down below and join the channel. You can be in our fleet video at the end of the episodes. And uh, that support's really helpful. Or you can go over to Patreon slash Trekyards as well. It's another way to do it on a monthly basis. And we also we appreciate you guys over there as well. All the same, All the same privileges and stuff apply to those members as well. So... By all means, check it out. Plus, our cool Discord server, where we might be doing watch parties soon of older Trek and stuff. So make sure you keep an eye on that, on that and uh, 
get the updates. So, anyhow. Also, there are links down below to the Teespring and the Tee Public Store where you guys can get yourself to cool check yards merch. So check that out as well. All of the ways to help and support. But just watch, like the videos, super thanks, super chat. You know the routine. All the stuff to help us out. We appreciate it. It all does make all of the difference. It does. Right. So, yeah. Going. Hi, Stuart. Right. So... You've now watched this how many times this episode? Uh, twice. Okay. And how I'll many seconds? episode? Third, third time tonight. With Sylvia. So, yeah. Yeah, let me know what she thinks as well, because she has a different perspective. I've been interested to know her, mm -hmm. her mm -hmm. thoughts. Uh, so yeah, season five, yeah. the final season, we've crossed into the unknown. Uh, I think it's getting some relatively positive thoughts online at least those are of a balanced perspective we try to be yeah so Stuart what do you think of season 5 episode 1 and how do you feel on the second watch because literally when we both watched we, we reviewed them within 7 or 8 minutes having just, just like fresh fresh in the brain so tell me your new thoughts yeah. my friend tell me your new thoughts well it's off to a good start I gotta say I'm kind of worried that this season's going to be good <laughs> it's going to be a shame that it's the last season because uh, so far these first two episodes have been fantastic. I was ex I wasn't excited going into this one, but after watching it, I was like, that was really good. They did some really good stuff in that, so I'm glad that they, you know, have, have kind of upped their game a bit. So I'm looking forward to a good season. But that being said, last season the first two episodes were good, and then it just kind of got shoestrung in the middle. And at the end, the last episode was pretty good with the 10C. So I hope that doesn't happen in this case. They got a very good premise and a good uh, hunt going on. And I think it's going to be fun. So having watched it a second time, um, it was it was it was it was good. I, I, I still prefer episode two more, but. And I know you, your view kind of varies on that. You could prefer this one, which is fine. But there's a lot of really good stuff to love in here. And not, and nothing really bad, honestly. Uh, the pacing was good. I thought the, the character development was good. And I'd like to see more. Well, we've got a lot of relationship things going on <laughs> from different characters. It'd be interesting to see where those all go. And there's definitely some setups for a Starfleet Academy show with Tilly. It's also fantastic to see Tilly back, even though we see her more in the second episode where she's more Tilly-like, kind of back to the way she was, as opposed to the writing they did for her last season. So there's a lot to, to, to like here. And plus the new captain, Captain Rainier. I like him and looking forward to seeing more of him as well. So it was a good start off to the, to the whole uh, season. So, yeah, I was kind of excited by it for it by the end of it. So, yeah. How about you? What did you think of this going in? I know you were a little bit more looking forward to it than I was prior to it, so... I mean, not necessarily the highest bar, as in just like, oh, it'll be, you know, yeah, some, some is good. Yeah, it's, you know, I think the fact that we now know the MacGuffin as a damn good MacGuffin entirely changes my aspect of the, of the season now going forward, because it isn't this doomsday weapon, it kind of is, and anything's a doomsday weapon, right? Like, whatever. But, like, it isn't actually a doomsday weapon. It isn't a, a this, this, or this. It's a very simple, straightforward, understandable, canon-linking, can so far canon-respecting mm -hmm. element. Cool. Far more excited now for the season. Um, and that certainly helped. First viewing, of course, it is what the hell's happening in a good way. Like, it's all so up in the air conceptually. Second viewing, it's far more of a TV show. I, I say that in that you sort of see the structure of it more um, and the flow because every si there's a lot of surprising like you you couldn't <coughs> you couldn't predict you know that the the ship crash you couldn't predict the TNG you couldn't predict the rom like all these things you just you couldn't predict the first watch but second time when you're watching ah okay I see that set there I see that logic there I see there's a, there's, a, there's a logical flow in second watch and certainly having watched the second one it does help you appreciate the first one more um, in general. No, it's strong. Uh, I think I do need to rewatch all the Discovery <laughs> to be able to summarize. But it, it, in my head, it's one of my favorite Discovery episodes. Um, in terms of my enjoyment of it, right? I'm not going to speak to the quality of of anything in particular because it's every season is different. But this felt like a Star Trek episode, 
Well, the characters felt like Star Trek characters for the most part. Like, I didn't think much of it. The tone was nice, fresh, and like other Trek shows, the MacGuffin was good and based and, and, and straightforward. Burnham, as last season, was good and balanced, had many moments of just, that's a good character moment for you, while still being her season one self, which is which is absolutely fine. The new introduction characters were great. Raina was great. Both villains were good. Like, yeah, f- first sniff test, they passed. You know, interesting, with some dimension added to them. Cool. Uh, all the other characters are still doing well. Vance is still good. Um, the Admiral, the, the President is still good, etc. Like I said, Tilly's season one today again. Kind of vibe. She lost, A, that command training, like, subplot. Now it's just teacher. Fun. Ah, like, cool. That's why they hired you, right, for season one. That's what you brought to the role... Um, that's why they, you know, that's why they signed your paycheck to do that sort of character, and then you obviously changed it as the season went on. Seasons went on. Yeah. Uh, I liked it. I, I, yeah, it was a, it was a, it was a, it was a, I think it's probably the same quality, second watch to first watch. It's not really much new I. The only thing new I saw was I saw them take out the ice linear chips in the first scene that I missed the first time. That's the only thing new I saw. But I appreciated it very much what it was. And there are some super chats, and there's a poll, Stuart, so let's get to those. Super chat from Olivia, five dollars. Mm. Did you know you can make, or I can make Stuart say, six, six, the six, six, wow, the sixth, sick, sheiks, sixth, sheeps, sick, and he has to attempt to say it. Super chat today. Yeah, I've got to read all the super chats. Ray Ricks, ten pounds for a discovery episode. Found this fun. Some things found annoying as usual. Namely, mm. Starfleet people not acting Starfleety, and even after starting a war, orders still don't seem to apply to Burnham. Uh, yeah, well, we'll talk about that a little bit. Um, mm. Happy, or uh, sorry, Olivia, two dollars. Happy first contact day. Yeah, it is actually indeed, indeed. indeed. And Matthew DeFried is five dollars. I'll say this: Imagine if we had disco episodes like this for all five years. They embrace canon threw in some fun stuff or threw in some new stuff and made it fun all i wanted yeah um z two dollars they fixed the shuttle bay door hey i mean sometimes and no that's fun (laughs) and there's a poll so go vote on the poll guys Mm -hmm. were these two episodes some of the best episodes of disco mediocre okay for trek good for disco or sorry still bad go vote yeah because I do think they're some of the best yeah. of Discovery. Um, now, it doesn't mean they're not necessarily as unique as some of season one, but I'd certainly rather watch this than so much else of Discovery. And yeah, if this, if this had been season one, oh my god. Just, just, just this, literally this episode. Starting off with an exposition dump about the galaxy, the fact, I was telling you know, we're in the future, wow, cool. Instantly you jump to a planet, thing with the past, zips in, TNG link, Bish Bosh Admiral. You'd be like, holy, wow, this is, Bold and energetic and techno and wow, everyone can beam every- like it'd be crazy, right? But it still feel tonally like Star Trek with this, with this positive vibe with some very impressive other stuff. So that was would have been great. Um, just took took him a while to, yes. uh, to to sort of get here. Yeah, yeah. Let's get into it. Yeah, uh, first shot is second time we've seen warp like this. The mm-hmm. First time was in a JJ film. Mm-hmm. with the, mm-hmm. the distortion which warping space not a problem i guess but again once you get into the by the ship and you get that warp tunnel effect it's just kind of like eh. i mean it's but closer anyway. than it's been in previous seasons there's actually streaking stars because if you remember the first season it was just blue <laughs> like this is this is them what an, an, another season in a row going backwards to canon and more so um like it's it's certainly yeah. in some shots the, it looks far more warpy I don't want to do a seventh yeah. warp comparison video because we do them a lot. Um, but I feel this is their <laughs> closest, uh, at, le- at least yeah. in some shots. And what a way to kick off the uh, the episode, yeah. though. We got Burnham on the exterior of a ship at work. Yep. And it's like, I didn't think the day would start like this. Like, I knew or, this scene was coming. When I started the day, I didn't think I'd be doing this. Yeah. yeah. And uh, it, it was great because I this was in this one trailer and I'm like oh they're getting this out of the way right away so they showed yeah. us like the yep the one thing they had <laughs> yeah which so, I yeah yeah exactly. it was kind of neat to see and it, in, in the more we see things 
that even the even this season on there's a ton of stuff episode two so i like when they they actually putting bigger elements right at the get-go and yeah the fact this you know this felt like a gimmicky thing in the trailers because discovery you know we're jaded a little bit in what i've done before but this was done reasonably well what makes it interesting is Raina yeah. and the other ship that's the that's the good stuff like the dynamics but there they don't yes. linger up too much it sets up well it's dramatic i mean the led wall you can definitely see when it's just behind her like that shot is so obviously a flat wall but it's fine like it is a flat wall right like it says it's a flat wall like that's fine um it's fine <laughs> it reflects on her suit so it is more real it's just very very that's very fake looking but that's okay yeah it's a good action you seem to start it off on so yeah i think she's it twice uh, yeah. Go for the budget. <laughs> Skeleton Strange New Worlds. It was in five dollars. Thanks so much. To people criticizing the actors not acting trekky, do you know how military officers act a thousand years from now? Starfleet is not the US Navy. Correct. <laughs> yeah, I mean yeah. Uh, it's more just the tone of Star Trek versus the actual uh, internal stuff. Because A A everyone's different. And B, yeah, you, you it's hard to judge what Starfleet is after a thousand years. You know, you're allowed to yeah. say they're a bit more this or a bit more that. It's like, yeah, yeah. Um, certainly <laughs> ideal cases or, or not, but uh, yeah, it's just a tone. It's a general tone that we, we look for, which is, you know, bad. Yeah. But then we get a flashback to four hours earlier. <laughs> um, One flashback later. Now, a lot happened in a short amount of time, the... so I'll let, I'll let you go into this, because a lot does happen. Yeah. They get served Tonic 2161, which is the official cocktail of the Millennium Celebration for Star- or the Federation. Um, well, before you complain, it's not actually a thousand years. They say, well, we skipped it because the burn yes. was celebrating. Cool, good. Cute way to begin. Absolutely fine. Yeah. The STEM support, $2. Loved Romulan ship. Despise the cheap set redress. Yes. 100% what you just said. We'll get there. Although I don't know if it's cheap to build um, like 100 LED panel thingies. Like, the, the, you know, yeah. they've done a lot of, like, it's not great, but it's a lot of things they did. <laughs> yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah, and Adira is like, what's, what's with this drink? What are the little floaty things? Oh, those are the stars, like on the Federation logo. And it tastes like Jumba Sticks. DS9 callback. Mm. Interesting. Okay. And I, yeah. I obviously, first first watch you think um, Adira should know, but also from Earth and pre or post Federation, so it's fine. Like, the, the confusion is absolutely fine in the situation. Um, and as the audience just appreciate it, uh, is A OK. And the, the tone here is just so interesting because in season three, we got the Federation's back. In season four, we got some big stuff come together. But it was still feeling as if, oh no, was the the big vibe here. The tone is very ch- chill, gentle, and a sense of we did it, guys. You know what I mean? The, you know, it's expanding, and and that's what they kind of say. So it, it really reset the vibe again, and it feels nice, you know. Yeah. But uh, Paul Stamets is like, I'm gonna leave. And it's like, no, stay. Come on. You just found out that they're shuttering the Spore Drive mm-hmm. um, program, though. And he's all annoyed with his scientific luminary status. He did something really great, but he's not, he's not remembered for it. <laughs> yeah. He's not even a footnote, necessarily. Because, of course, it got classified in Season 1. Uh, and then, then again in Season 3. Yeah, it's a, it's a... Yeah. He can't ever be famous for it, sorry. But it's a good scene. Uh, Spore drive yeah, being so. being removed from the, the game is interesting. Or at least, well, I, I wonder the hell path pathway drive is because if it's more advanced than the spore drive, at least, at least, well, no, I didn't say that. It, it's more user friendly, and do you know, obviously having instantaneous travel is really great between the quadrant. But you know, you can get away with yeah. not quite instantaneous. You know, very 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 fast is also okay. So you know, yeah. Uh, and he just goes on to say that I would have figured out the navigator problem someday, which I think is going to come into play later in the season. So, But then it could have been rolled out to the whole fleet. 
I like Adira though. Like, hey, it makes Discovery one of a kind. That's a good thing. <laughs> it's like trying to cheer him up. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. yeah, it's um, a gen- gentle scene. And then Burnham gets called away with a big ass smile because she can emote in this season. Captain Burnham, guys, she can smile and be happy. It's not season one Burnham anymore. There ain't no, there ain't no Vulcanness left in this, in this, 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 yeah. this nurse, and she's so much better for it. Uh, Until he yeah. sees a guy and gets a little like, "Hey, I gotta go," kind of like. And that that's better on second watch, of course, because like, I see. Yeah. yeah. You got a crush on this random guy. Uh, and we got a Saru Sur- and um, what's her name? Talyn. Nope. I think. Oh, oh to... I can't remember her name. Anyway. Madam President. Sure. Vulcan President Lady. Talking about uh, that Suru has news and she's like going to mm-hmm. mind melt him to get it out of him. And he's like, no, I got a job offer, but I might ha- I'm might. i going to have to f- leave Starfleet, like essentially. Mm-hmm. Um, representing a small faction of uh, like planets that need help essentially so although, although clearly staying at and it would get in, in headquarters is what he says yes yeah we would take him off the ship but at headquarters where he'd mm-hmm. see her more often so he's trying to make this decision so now not Vulcan as part of the federation should obviously be there relatively often it's like that's where the head council is yeah it, it's a little bit early in the uh, early in the show to have sort of romance subplot and that's a common thing this episode they're really focusing on this I'm of course wondering is this season a backdoor pilot for the Academy show? Is this us getting Syrah off the pl- off the planet? Because he's one of the, he's one of those loved characters in Discovery onto that show. Uh, Rillick, her name's Rillick, to get her continuing. Because cool. I mean, the Academy show could take all the best characters of Discovery and leave all the rest, and it'd be a darn good thing to take. I mean, you know, so that gets me what they're doing here, and and making it a season wide arc so that you appreciate why. Because it's very much like because unless they have a whole thing of. Wow, I've got to stay on the Discovery because life or death, or he's then off the ship the entire season, which feels likely given that Rain is taking over as the second in command. So, it makes sense that he'd be, you know what I mean? And they've obviously built some new Starfleet command sets, which means they're committing a lot more time there, which is absolutely fine. So, they're obviously yeah. they're, they're, they're cutting up the, the cast a bit, hence why it's so early and, and forceful, which is okay. And I think from these first two episodes, this is kind of off topic for the moment, but I think what's going to happen is that uh, Rainer is going to take command of the Discovery at the end of the season, and Book and um, Burnham are going to end up teaming back up and going off and doing their thing together. They're kind of almost foreshadowing that a little bit. So it'll be interesting to see how it plays out. But anyway. That's regardless. actually really cool. Yeah, we did say that in season three that it felt like that might be a really nice organic journey for them. Uh, having just got Captain, you know, to then swap it out. But they have such a good chemistry, those two actors and those two characters. It will be tremendous. Yeah, yeah very, very possible. I don't know. The Scottish Nightmare member for 47 months at oh. the rank of Ensign. Thank you very much, Scottish Nightmare. Thank you so much. Uh, felt like a story more fitting for Picard Season 1. Well, there's a lot of that in it, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that. It's lighter, funner, more respectful. Yeah. There's not things of season one of Picard. <laughs> uh, but then uh, Vance shows up and hands her the infinity room. Yeah. And just <laughs> make make sure you show the camera with how you hand it off so you happen to see it. Yep, yep, good. Yep, got it, yep. <sighs> oh, the camera moves when they come into play. <sighs> Which is an interesting idea. I love how Kovic is even like, it's a bit theatrical for my taste, but some like that sort of thing. <laughs> Fair. And this is a great use of LED wall tech. Just yeah. white. I need Perfect. guns. Lots of guns. Because this is kind of a hard <laughs> thing to do normally. This is just, yeah. Uh, yeah. Cool. But, yeah, we find out there's an 800-year-old Romulan ship found at the edge of the Beta Quadrant. A lot of beta in this episode. Yeah. Gotta jump there immediately. And, uh, What's on board? She asks. To which she gets a response: something vital to the security of the Federation. She's like, "Well, it doesn't really answer my question." I'm aware. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we find out it's a red directive. It's a really important um, mm-hmm. directive. Mm-hmm. Top, top, top secrets. So, which some people have kind of said, it feels like their version of the Mega Directive. 
Yeah. You know, well, the that... Omega Director was a singular thing, mm-hmm. though. So, yeah. But the, 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 the emotional equivalent, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's kind of how it vibes a little bit, which I like. Um, and this is one of the things where I liked Burnham's reaction when he says that. She knows her job. She takes half a second to think and then just sort of, right, next step. I like that. It felt a good sense of command without overacting or overdoing. Nice and nice and balanced. I, I liked it. Um, and considering yeah. that they actually ask Tilly for information while they're on the mission, this is all based, not real time, but this whole episode takes place in a day easily. And there's, they, because obviously you can transport anywhere and spore drive, you know, Kovic by saying, right, go now. You'll be there in about five minutes. Yeah. Yeah. No problem. It's that level of dum 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 yeah. quick. Um, the party's still just finishing when they well, the outer party, which is kind of weird to have a sh- story where literally zero time can pass because everything's so instant. Um, so it's a it's a weird thing, even just like walking to a transport room. It's like nope, go go yeah. go, zip zip zip. Well, <laughs> it's funny because this next scene made me think I would hate being on a, on the bridge crew in this time period because Saru just boom, instantly comes in like you don't get warning of like mm. shh, the doors opening. To look busy, you gotta be doing mm-hmm. stuff mm-hmm. all the time. Because people just walk onto the bridge out of the transporter. <laughs> Although you say that, but given they never do any away missions, um, what are they doing on the ship really? What are their functions? Yeah. I mean, the, I, I think I think they do most of the jobs, you know, already. Uh, again, set not changed, even one iota. L cars are still the old yeah. ones. Lighting's still the old thing. Um, I, in the second watch, I thought, oh, wow, they're all being given dialogue lines. We're going to use the bridge. No. Nope. Yep. Two episodes in, what's that? One fifth of the season, the bridge crew in total got maybe 15 lines and some of them are I, sir. Like, at this, at this point, these actors are like, well, there's no COVID excuse. There's no new show on excuse. We're just extras. We are all just extras. And that's what come to terms with it, right? It's like, you know, Shatner says about George Decay and such, like, like, I was on set five days a week, all day. George came in once a week for half a day. Like, he wasn't there much. I was I was working. I mean, these people, like, you know what I mean? They must be on set for a day, a week. Which is fine, but, it you know, you wonder why it's not a bridge crew feel, because they're, they're not there. They're all extras. It's odd. It's odd, Stuart. I thought they were going to give more. But if Burnham can lead the if Burnham can lead the mission, then you have no need for the rest of the crew. A lot of the time, because you could ov- you could easily have, they are in the next scene, but how much two back to back? It's like well, they could, they could have been in every mission, right? Yeah. Well, it's a small thing, but you don't even need to have them then. <laughs> no. Yeah, well, it's a nice pan around the bridge and everything's ready. There's dots loaded, blah blah blah. You mm-hmm. see Linus, you see, but and then all of a sudden, yeah, and, I'm, I'm, like, and... I'm like the tactical guy saying, "Weapons armed and locked." <laughs> it's a very, I like his little delivery there. It's like I'm ready to fight. You lock- what are you locked on to? No, no, no. We're not firing anything yet. <laughs> yeah. this, this is recover from a, like, wrecked ship. What are we shooting at? You know? You never know. You never know. <laughs> um, oh. And then, yeah, then Burnham and Kovic just transport onto the bridge as well. It's like, oh, everything's ready. We're ready to go. Thanks, everyone, for being available at literally a minute's notice. Oh, yeah, <laughs> two and a half minutes' notice. We were all in the shower. We beamed onto, into our uniforms just as mission. It's like, Jesus. Yeah. I mean, hey, very efficient these days. Yeah. She gives a summary. We're taking Kovic on this mission, 800-year-old mm-hmm. ship in a debris field. Mm-hmm. We need to recover an item. Mm-hmm. Can't fail. This is important. And then they get uh, information that scavengers are in the area. Mm-hmm. And they go, they're going to moderate, monitor comms and probe signals. So we got to be careful. So it's like, okay, cool. But it's probably yeah. going to go bad, so you better lock those weapons. Yep. <laughs> and yes, Mr. Garrick, that is David Cronenberg. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, he's great as ever, except he has longer scenes. He's not as good at following through, I think, with expositional dialogue. He has to show more emotion that way. He's good at his one tone. But he, he lost a yeah. bit of his mystique when he's just talking, talking. Uh, but then you have the one single shot of Roman ship, which I'm shocked. It's like, that's it. You know, the, the, why, why is there no, you know, celebrate the fact that you've got this ship. Don't be entirely ignoring it. There it is. There's, there's a bride. Aeon says they still can't cure eyesight a thousand years from now. Well, if you remember from like last season, I believe, somebody asked him about his glasses and he said, I just like them. 
put them back on. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's a fashion. It's a statement piece. Well, it's like Who being bald in the future. It's just well, I want to be bald. Like that's it. Yeah. The, you can obviously grow new hair at a moment's notice. It's obviously just a choice. And it's like, you know what? It seems like such a small complaint. He can have glasses. It's the mega future. Everything's a choice. Like if that's part of why you don't like a show because on one person out of every single character wears glasses. It's a lot of characters that don't wear glasses. <laughs> so it's okay if they do. The one person. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm not even going to mention it, except when you mentioned it. Yeah. Anyway. Oh, yeah. Straight into the action. Oh, yes. Of the obviously not the Discovery sets. Uh, the, the corridors weren't too bad, right? I was already like, ugh, cringy. And then they go into the room, and it's the the windows. The shape of the windows. For Christ, they could have covered. Alter the, sh- alter the shape of the windows. Do something. Just Just cover them, yeah. Yeah, yeah, like but I'm not even gonna bother like doing comparison renders compared to Roman sets because it's not. Luckily, the the discovery set is so generic that you can add green lights and now it looks different. It's just the room, yeah. The room lets it down some. Uh, although again, it's fine. It, it's classic tradition, right? Like, yeah, you know. Uh, although hell, hell, impressive the ship to still be, still be flashing lights eight hundred years in the future. <laughs> Hella good. And a cloaked vault as well. My goodness. Yeah. Yeah. But they remove their helmets and um, mm-hmm. Locke is like a liquid gelatinous that kind of forms into like a solid. So we need we need some explanation well, of that. Yeah, it's, it's unknown. The there, there's more going on, which is exciting. Yeah. Um, which is almost su- subtle enough you miss it. But it makes you think as an audience, oh, I caught that. I'm smart. Uh, or did you notice the, the lady that her hair is so frizzy that the, 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 the it's such a, like, God, this is a bloody bullshit helmet around a frizz hair. Uh, the compositing is really, I mean, it's good because it's like, Jesus Christ, it's hard to do. But it's like, my God, her hair's bad for that. That's yeah. great. And yes, there's our two antagonists. Are they truly villains? I mean, they try to kill us all several times in the show. Um, and, as, and a colony of people. But are they really villains? Eh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What, what do you think? What do you think, Stuart? How do you feel about them now? Uh, no, they're in... just just having fun, as Book said. <laughs> I mean, it'll be interesting to see how villainous they actually are, because mm-hmm. Colbert made a point of saying they don't, they aren't violent just for the sake of being violent. That's so, important line, yeah. Yeah, um, but we got Maul and Locke. So, anyway, and she just disconnected. It was just reconnected. Way weird. Uh, but I liked them. I thought they were good. I mean, Bonnie and Clyde is certainly the correct. That yeah, that's what they're going for. It works quite well. Um, I think their love interest Nurse did not feel forced. Um, felt mildly poetic, you know. It, it's nice. I, I buy it. I like it. Uh, and I think. I mean, hopefully they have lots to do because that guy's makeup is pretty elaborate. Like it's a yeah. full face. It's actually really rather good. Um, and she's obviously got a look. No, they were good. And as I said in our other review, to have them actually say eight minutes, four minutes, whatever. To take out easily a minute, just talk about what happens after. It's such a baller move of like power play of like, yeah, we're fine. Yeah. Are you? Yes. Okay. Okay. But it, it tells you how confident they are, how reassured they are, how yeah, we, we we got this, we got this. I like that. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, they kind of talk each other up a bit. You know, mm-hmm. you're happy with pebbles, or do you want the mountain kind of thing? And mm-hmm. he talks about holodeck and then bed. It's like, ooh, okay, well, interesting. Yeah. Um, yes, so they detect the two life forms on board and then they disappear. And they're like, did they leave or did they cloak themselves? So we get Washikam and Bryce going over with Burnham. For the f- good. And I love how Kovich, too, is like, I don't care what happens to them. Mm-hmm. Complete this mission successfully. Mm-hmm. It's, and she's like, uh, it, it, that's. But force, he's like, I don't care. Just do it. It's mm-hmm. like, okay, well, there you go. You know that stun setting? Just ignore that. It's, it's all good. Hmm? Yeah. And I like Bowen's face because at the end of the day, this is her job and it's her choice how she interp- interprets, like how she does that as a proper role. But, yeah, you get a pretty obvious, like, okay, don't love the sound of that, but my job. So I liked her bounce there. I thought that was 
nicely yeah. done. And it's great just as a tonal thing, just to tell tell the audience, oh dear. Ha 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 ha. I liked it. That was good. Not a band account, two dollars. Gel face seems canon disco Star Trek Klingon. Can you explain why you think that? No, no, not a band account. Also gifted one Trek Yards membership. So Trek or not, our awesome Trek or not is now a member of the channel for a month. Thank you so much, not a band account for doing that. We do love our channel members, etc. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I would not agree. Klingon, just, just the record. I would, yeah, neither would I. Uh, I'd, I'd veto um, that. <laughs> but I liked them. I thought they were. Are they we? Were, they were pretty good. Stuck on that one image. We didn't show Burnham. Um, a reaction to Kovic, I don't think, unless I'm missing something. There they are, Dr drama, and then tons. Yeah. Which there is the twin moons, there is the the the, uh, the hints are there as old every season. Uh, and then back on the ship, it's amazing how little these three or these two side characters get. You imagine the script thinking, oh, we get to be on a planet or on a ship, but. Part of being an actor is actually not just being there saying, yes, Captain, pew, pew. It's having a character. Nothing they do in the scene has any character whatsoever, these two. Like, zero you know, thought... percent. They, they could be absolutely anybody, and it would mean absolutely nothing, and I'm sorry for them. There's no jibes, there's no jibes, there's no fun. It's just, they're just people who are with her. For a second, I thought it was Bryce and Burnham that got hit by the immobilization thing. I thought it was Washington going after them mm. for a second. That would have been cool. And then I'm like, of course not. Of course not. Why? But yeah, I really thought that's what happened the first mm. time I watched it for like 10 seconds and I was happy because, oh, Washington was going to get to do it. No. Nope. Yeah. But is that they didn't even try and give them some fun lines. I, they're just there. It's odd. It's odd. I, I was, yeah, a waste, waste opportunity of just having your cast. Um, and also massive shaky cam, oh my goodness, in this scene in particular, I know they're trying to hide the fact it's a redress their own set, but it's like, right, we yeah. need to go into this room and look around a bit, like, I know it's a boring idea, we were going to a room looking around, but my goodness, just chillax, just play the scene, don't have to shake him everything. <clears throat> then they go and find a, a mummified Romulan. Into the Which... same room again. Mostly. I was happy to see because it's exactly how Romulan should be addressed dressed in that uh, era. So, hell yeah, that was great. The really good, really good look and gross. Yeah, what a thing to have to build. Like, what do you do today, dear? Well, I, I made a Romulan corpse. Oh, right. Yep. Not just a corpse, but a mummy. Yeah. Yeah. True. Well, it hasn't pointed out, and we'll see later. It is not a fully canon accurate Romulan uniform. They do not have the shoulder pads, which is quite a notable part of the uniform. Now, this is technically a Picard era Romulan because they have Picard era Icelandia chips, even though he's wearing TNG era uniform. But I guess they just they didn't want to replicate. I mean, and then the, the physical show didn't want to make TNG Icelandia pit chips. They just used Picard ones as if people wouldn't notice because everything here is a. TNG, even though using uh, Picardi attack. Yeah. So. Not a band account, $2. Why isn't Burnham elected to the UFP president office? Might be, yeah. I mean, she might be political. I mean, yeah, sure. Sure. Maybe. Because they changed her character. She's not. Not how she started out, let's mm -hmm. put it that way. Mm -hmm. uh, but they find a cloaked. Well, they find an ex cloaked vault. Which just appears out of nowhere, not 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 in a cool CG. Which is like, oh, it's a, it's a bit, bit abrupt. We've got to zip past as a as a story, and then uh, yeah. So the, so the, so there's a tri trick. Four minutes. They 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 couldn't have possibly. Wait no. Wait. They say because running encryption is very difficult even for now, which makes no sense. But they say they couldn't have done it in four minutes, yeah. but they did do it in four minutes. Because yes. it's still there. Mm. Yes, and then the lady's just hiding behind a, a wall, and then he's actually cloaked, so that's worth noting. He has a personal cloak, because that's quite a large plot thing. And they have stun beam guns, which are quite cool. Um, it could be why he's gelatinous. <laughs> it's got some kind of weird side effect of the cloaking thing, and she doesn't uh, sure. use it. I don't know. 
Yeah, I'm just saying that's an important thing. They have personal cloaks as well. Yeah. Um, but there's a firefight that happens throughout the halls. Deck the halls with bowels of pew pews. <laughs> Uh, and she does turn a pistol into a rifle in a very good single shot VFX trick. Um, lots of practical sparks I liked. Very boring non shootout, but reversal. Just talk and they're like okay, and they have the old grenade in the hand trick. You know you can't if you hit me I'll I'll fall. But it instantly gets us the moment of okay they're not like the average villain. They're actually going to have some communication. They're just going to be pew pew. I like that first well second direction they're they're smarter. They have an idea. Uh, yeah, that already made me more interested in them. Mm-hmm. And their device activates and it's kind of like a little wormhole that Black hole, hole yeah. on the floor and she gets sucked right out and immediately her suit activates. Nice touch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Kind of cool. Um, <clears throat> the, the only thing I thought apart from cool was that my god, this is a messy shot. All the debris being blue and white on black. Her suit is blue and white and black. It's such a visually busy and kind of gross-looking sequence. It's cool, but, like, you know? <laughs> it, yeah. It, it's the most one-dimensional thing ever. Until we then jump back inside and it's, it's all orange. and uh, It's cool. CG is just weirdly lit, etc. <laughs> Yeah, and then she sees their ship cloaked, and she's like, "No, I got it. We're on it." And uh, she magnetizes her boots after slamming into the ship, which is kind of neat. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. <clears throat> but yeah, and then they jump to warp, and that takes us the four hours past yeah. and future. Here we go again. <clears throat> she tries disabling their engines from the outside, which cool. Um, and then the Antares shows up, <laughs> Rainier. And he's yeah. like, I've dealt with these assholes before. Trust me. She's mm-hmm. like, get out of here. Go. Let me do my thing. He's like, no, no, no. I'm sticking with you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Which I like. I like this tenacity and the fact that he's dealt with them before. He knows that if they get away, it's going to be quite a while before we can find them again. So. Yeah. I mean, they, they, he, it takes a long time to get anywhere. So he's clearly in this area of space, possibly as a reaction to them as well. Yeah, you know, uh, and also you might ask why how's Burn be firing through their shields? Because that they can't skip over that. Because she's in a warp bubble. A okay. Yeah. It's yeah. weird, but it's cool. Um, absolutely fine. And yeah, I like the yeah. new ship, which is a combination of two season four ships. Uh, it's the tuna cells from one variant and a saucer from another variant. So it's actually an original kit bash, but I rather like it. I think it's a good looking version. Um, well. I like, too, how she says, you know, reverse engines and pull them out. And he makes the point of saying, if we had a pathway drive, yeah, absolutely, I could do that. But mm-hmm. we're still making it with burn tech out here, so mm-hmm. not an upgraded ship. Mm-hmm. Uh, nice touch. Nice mm-hmm. touch. Yeah, warp is still used, but uh, can be improved. Now, there's a line here. Mm. She says, I've got a saxophone lesson to get to. Makes me wonder if she's taking uh, saxophone lessons from a holographic Will Riker. Because you know Jonathan Frakes is involved with this season, like directing. Saxophone was a weird choice of musical instrument, in my opinion. So I'm like, is there a connection? I mm. mean, that's kind of fun. You're saying that potentially Riker might end another Trek show. <laughs> yeah, well, there you go. I that's mean, what a lot he... of people have been hoping for. <laughs> I mean, because Riker has also not appeared in this show yet as a character. And it'd be weird because he's appeared in almost every other, almost every other. Uh, he didn't appear in TOS, of course, because he wasn't Riker yet. You know, so I, we'll, we'll we'll give him that. That's okay. We'll we'll give him that. Yeah, that'd be cool. I mean, Saxford. Yeah, that was a, it was a you know, I, I I had a little chuckle out of it. It's a fun line. Humanize them more. Uh, it was a bit frantic, and I, and I kept thinking they clearly didn't film any of the angles they wanted with the dialogue they wanted because almost every single dialogue line is based on a shot where they're doing you know this and you can't see their mouths or you know some weird cg so they clearly just did like how the hell do you edit this you have nine angles none of which is very like all of it's like this yeah. and none of it means anything you just sort of just just edit you just you just you just, you just play right it's not bad it's, it's pretty pretty decent but they do not want you to hear or see the dialogue <laughs> for the scene Oh, Mr. Captain says Riker played the trombone, though. I thought he played the saxophone. 
Yeah, you're right. Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> so we've got untracked. Oh, Detmer got a yeah. line. Who, who cares? I mean, yay! That's awesome. I wish he has a spin off show. That'd be cool. For agents only failing to get more lines. For the fifth year in a row. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> Discovery comes in. It's quite cool. I like this moment. I wish it was less green, though. I don't know why everything is green warp. It's a bit obnoxious. <sighs> yeah. Like, it is actively making the shot look worse. Like, let's add stuff to it to make it look more stuff. Why? Shut up. Doesn't matter, you know? Let's distract from all the shitty low poly models. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, the, the ships look really good, though, honestly. Well, yeah, they, but... use, they, they use them how they want. Uh, and then Kovic is like, oh, you can get, you go sit, sit down if you want. He's like, oh, I'll be fine. Yeah, I'm going wait in the ready room. No, I'm fine here. What's the difference? I'd be I'd be standing on the bridge. I want to see what's going on. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> this thing goes for a lot. Just goes on longer. <laughs> yeah, she basically Rainier has to fear off so he doesn't get okay. destroyed, and then so he releases the tractor beam, and eventually their ship falls out of warp. And Burnham as well, which is a really funky, cool scene, actually. Yeah, they really are showing off their extended CG digital uh, character stuff. Because there's but a lot the ship, of long shots on this. The yeah, hell? the ship immediately drops out of warp, does a spin, 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 and warps off again. It's like, okay, what, what, what just happened? Am I missing something? Because she was getting their shields or their warp bubble trying to decreasing, decreasing yeah. percentage down. So anyway. Well, my, my thought was that they're actively like turning it down on their end as well to make it look as if it was worse. Maybe, maybe, yeah. But it's cool. It's a very familiar um, fighter, modern day aircraft trick, firing the flares, and they'll jump to warp as well, which is kind of great. Although, boy, this spacesuit can survive a drop out of warp. Jeez. Jeez. Yeah. Impressive. And, and the shot smacking, keeps going. Yeah. And almost smacking like a bug into the windshield. I did appreciate this though, like the almost and then right on the bridge with the suit like disappearing. I thought that was kind of neat. See, this is the sort of JJ move that like kind of works. Yeah. Because if she had flung through the force field of the view screen or whatever, that would have been obnoxious. But for it to be this giant ah, and then beam in, and then it, the momentum changes because obviously the transport you can do that to some extent. Is kind of satisfying. Although, boy, hell motion track to keep a spacesuit on her head and then morph it off as she turns. God, they had... Yeah. I know that's what they do a lot, but my goodness. And I, I, I really like her vibe. Because they what she just went through. All the lights, yeah. Yeah. firing warp, seeing literally the light speed de dematerialize around her. Yeah. And almost flying trip and like, <sighs> Shit. It, it's simple, but actually a very effective... I was at a drinks reception 40 minutes ago. <laughs> and then Kovic, of course, is not happy. He's Ew. like, you failed. You let them yep. go. We'll find them. And then Rainer comes in and says, that cherry that they just dropped on our shit Sunday. It's like, okay. <laughs> Left us 20 warp signatures to chase, so we don't even know where they're going. Yeah. And, and even in the 32nd century with future ships, he still goes, just, 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 just. <laughs> fix them hologram. It's exactly like, the same I, as... Yeah. Go ahead. No, go ahead. It's exactly the same text it was in the... Uh, season one time. Pretty much. Unfortunately. Um, but yeah, Prokovich, it's like, this is where you tell me that you have a brilliant idea. She's like, I think I know somebody that can help. Dun, dun, dun. And she does. <laughs> as we see a new perspective spore jump via the shuttle bay, which is back to open! You gotta admit, it looks really cool, but uh, yeah, I'd rather not be there. Mm. Thanks. And again, this is like minutes later, so they had to call book, say, right, mission's over, you're doing this thing, what is it? Well, <laughs> we'll explain on route, we're gonna pick up in two minutes. What? <laughs> like, everything's so fast paced in this. Uh, and she, yeah, beams in, says hi. Then we get a pet, somebody's pet tribble crawling up the wall and <laughs> falls. Reminded me of a mouse droid when it like scuttles, yeah. skirt, scuttles away. It's like, uh huh. Yep, yep, yep. And Stuart, why are they not beaming? 
Why are who not beaming? Well, why are they walking through the corridor to her lift? Like, every minute counts, and they could beam straight to the, the meeting. Oh. Why are they walking to the table lift? Because they need to talk things out. They haven't seen each other in a long time. Mm. But they used to beaming everywhere. There's a, there's a big problem with the episodes of, like, they can and do beam everywhere, and also do not and just walk. Like... Either do, yeah. it all, do it all the time or don't do it all the time, make it a meaningful thing. This is entirely unjust. I mean, I like that kind of talking, but they could just have stopped in a corner <laughs> and talked. Because yeah, they just see them, like, transport everywhere. And then, like, three seasons later, they're all obese because they don't well, get any exercise. Yeah. Uh, uh, but it would be kind of funny to have, like, a little meta commentary of, like, yeah, we both knew we had to have a conversation, so we decided not to beam that we do every day, like, 400, 400 times a day we beam. But we both subconsciously said, we're going to walk. So we get two minutes. And then the, the Admiral's like, why weren't you here in three seconds? We walked. You did what? Kovic, like, but this is the fate of the universe, is it? Mm, maybe. Mm. What? Well, you didn't tell us what this was, so we really don't give a shit at this point. We're going to take our time. Thank you very we much. We walked. Maybe if you want to tell us what this is about, we might fucking transport. Exactly. <laughs> uh... Yeah. Um, let's see. So we get the report that uh, we get introduced to Locke and Maul. With no information and... at all. I just read the file. Well, like, like, like nothing. He's unknown, but she's human. Yeah. Numerous aliases. Nothing really important. Yeah, it was just giant unknowns. And, uh... Yes, Burnham reports that they had a Romulan puzzle box. And... And Vance is like, you know, Dr. Kovic, any context what this mission is could help. He's like, yeah, I'm not at liberty to discuss that. Uh -huh. <clears throat> but Book figures out which warp trail was the correct one, or at least the most likely one. Uh -huh. Which, I'm just going to take a look at this map and see if there's anything interesting. I don't think so. But I like his logic. You know, I mean, I, I don't imagine that every single warp trail was somewhere deliberate it's just different directions yeah but if they're gonna go somewhere go somewhere real yeah i like it and then it's kumau the dealer there was a dealer there that loves old stuff mm -hmm. what's his name fred just fred yeah <laughs> yeah uh <clears throat> cool stuff yeah i love how rainier's like my mission or hers mm. well, why don't you try working together Mm -hmm. Well, it's a fair question. He has massive experience seniority over her, and yeah. he's lived in this era. She has still only been here for two years, and yeah. a good chunk of that was a courier without following the rules, and she's broken every rule in Starfleet several times. Like, you know. And, then, and he's like, this should take me an hour at warp. Don't start without me. Because <laughs> he knows that they're going to be there, like, instantly. You take a nap. That me off. That I'll be there. Yeah, uh, I have a joke of that. In, I have a joke about that in an upcoming film, uh, but it's good. He, he takes it well. You know, they're, they're a, quite a good team, and that's still pretty close. An hour at warp. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> Guys, what do you think? Let's look at the the poll in the chat. We've got Ninety four votes in the poll. Uh, let's get one more vote. Uh, we are where we are so far. Were these two episodes, of course, was one episode two, so the best, mediocre, okay for Trek, good for Discovery, sorry, it's still bad. And we have some pretty interesting results so far. With 43%, almost half, we have some of the best episodes of Discovery, which is why I personally fall. A re mediumly close second, 34%, at okay for Trek, good for Discovery, which I think is also probably quite a fair comment. 15%, yeah. sorry, still bad. And 9% say mediocre. So, okay, okay. And 92 people here right now, which is awesome, guys. Mm. Make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you hit the like button. And let's get those likes up from 51 to 80. We can do 80. Let's get up to 80. We'd appreciate it. <clears throat> so Burnham and Saru have a little discussion here about can't find any information on this Romulan in the databases. And Saru offers a bit of advice. Maybe you can get some help in that regard which comes in later but um because the next scene is tilly and this this guy 
where she's all flustered because of this, the Andorian champagne. Is it hot in here? And he's like, I don't know. Is it hot in here? <laughs> Maybe you should go, you know. That, but they're talking about Starfleet Academy and getting her cadets to engage in... Um, She's like, I can't crash everybody onto an ice moon and have them learn the appreciation. Well, are you sure she can't do it? Can I? No. It went once, a year ago. Yeah. (laughs) This is setting up a relationship between these two. Either a romantic relationship, or she's interested in him, clearly. It seems like he's interested in I mean, his eyebrow acting tells you who he is. He is. Yeah. That's some good eyebrow acting. He's he's very good at subtle. Because you absolutely pick up on it, but it's very subtle. Now, the question is, there's obviously a new set. They've obviously designed new art design for the Academy slash the main building. Is this part of the setup for the Academy show? Because for me, this is entirely out of the blue. And why the hell are I meant, Why the hell should I care about a love interest for Tilly, who's a, a third-tier character in the show, and have a giant scene on it out of minutes? Unless exactly it's what it is. a big setup piece. What do you think? Exactly. That's exactly what it is. We're establishing the characters for Starfleet Academy, so when it starts, people are gonna be like, "Oh, I remember them. I'm invested. I'm gonna go watch." So yeah, that's exactly what it is. I think it's a good lead-in for the Academy show. And, and if you look at the um the the live stream, is that that chap's not there, or something? The floor's reflective. Her shadow exists, <laughs> but oh my god. Cause th- oh my god! Just, you don't. That's not how a light works. It doesn't go under. Like he's got no. <laughs> oh, that's fucking. Oh yeah, hilarious. and if you go, if you if you if you scroll, because you got the files too. If you scroll, he's also floating. You can see it. He's not trapped properly. Wow! So they, they what a weird decision. I because I what because and this might seem oh. a bit. What, what? Where are they right now? Her quarters. We would assume. We would assume on discovery. So maybe he's no, still at the no, no, academy. No, no, they're at Starfleet Academy on her her quarters. How did she get back there? Well, she was at the party the whole time. They just left the party. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, that's right. She's not on Discovery. She wasn't in the last scene. Gotcha. No. Yeah. Could, uh, so that must have been a reshoot then, because I'm wondering because I this is they shot this how I shoot a lot of stuff, which is a lot of close ups to avoid how it's showing there's no the other actor isn't there, but he literally isn't there for the two shots. I wonder if they originally wanted him to be a hologram so he wasn't on set and she was just saying her lines to herself and then they decided that doesn't make any sense. We'll put him in. Was he supposed to be see through hologrammy? He didn't flicker like no, 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 he in, wasn't meant to be in the no. last scene. That's, that's, a, that's a, interesting. That's so strange. Anyway, uh, it's anyway. it's an okay scene. It Tilly's good. She's just, just season one Tilly. Um, like that's it. Like there's not much there. Like, but I like. You know, he's nice. They seem nice. The walk's nice. Um, I am obviously left wondering like what is the difference between somebody who's had eight hundred years more evolution? Because this guy lived. This guy's not a discovery crew, but this is a true of this era chap who wants to date someone older than his greatest of grandmothers. <laughs> Greatest of grandmothers, you know. Um, and, I, and if they're going to really play into this more, it'd be interesting to see how that difference differences. Because certainly we've discussed before that it's odd to have the Discovery crew stay on an antiquated ship interior working without the knowledge of the future. They must either integrate the crews or whatever. And certainly if you've got the most advanced ship in the fleet, you wouldn't let it be run by Neanderthals. Sorry. <laughs> So we never saw that true interaction, and if and if you're staying on Discovery as an old crew member, you're not experiencing as much life with the new era. So she's now actually fully out there doing her own thing. I'd be interested to see how those um those chemistries do or don't work. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a very long scene though. It's it's fine, but you wonder why the episode's fifty nine minutes because it didn't need to bit. They're building up to yeah. Academy, I can guarantee uh, it. Thoughts on the replicator if, if, if replicator air? I like it. It's, yeah. it's, a, it's a good advancement on replicator tech. Yeah. Wherever you ask for it or wherever you usually yeah, you you want can, it, it just makes it. Yeah. It's like you said, sp- sp- spawn locations. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I mean, why not? I mean, if you can make replicable matter, um, I just want a brief clarification. Is this real coffee or replicable matter coffee? I say real, but... Yeah... And and she is cute here. Um, it definitely doesn't feel like season three or four, Tilly. No, I, I'm glad she's back to being the 
All that growth really. lost. <laughs> Which is fine, because it wasn't that interesting. Yep. Anyway, Burnham messages her and says, I got, do you want to help me out with something? She's like, have you been in the Andorian champagne? She goes, yes, but now I have coffee. Um, and she goes, of course I'm going to say yes. Whatever it is, I'm in. Breaking the law, go to jail. Yeah. But she's like drunk. Oh, Are you okay. bestest buddy? Yes. yes. And then we get a rather fun sport in. Boy, I do not miss the... <laughs> Just the ring spinning is perfectly ample. It's so much better. And a very Star Wars shot. Look yeah. at that planet. Yeah. I salute you for Star Wars. And then into speeder bike chasing. <laughs> yes. And it looks expensive and great. Like, as I said to you previously, this is great. It's big. This stuff is always very hard to do and expensive and difficult. Picard and none of this money. They spent more money in this episode, probably two Picard episodes, easily, for this, at least the CG budget. Um, it looks good. It's nice. Even the like internal sets are fine. Like they look nice. I, I like them. Yeah. And we get an awkward like house grudge. <laughs> I say hi. Is she a queen or is she a but princess now or? Yeah, she's still a queen. Oh, yeah. And then they're like, I'm pretty sure the silence was on you back and forth actually i'm pretty sure it wasn't and then all of a sudden rainier pops in and goes i love inconvenient or you know <laughs> i forget what he says exactly hold on a second i lost the oh my goodness i, I think it's a funny scene and then when rainier shows up it's just even better <clears throat> what does he say here i love feeling like i interrupted something yeah mm. you, got, you guys need a minute you good we're good <laughs> Uh, one thing that I thought was really quite amusing, I'm, I'm, yeah, I think you saw the meme, um, these speeder bikes and their costumes look almost identical to a Lower Decks episode from two years ago. Almost identical. wouldn't say almost, they are identical. <laughs> and the speeders are pretty much... Uh, I'm, and there must be a reference. They must have seen that episode. Cause that obviously aired, long, that aired before season four, or around yeah. season four, so they must have seen that and thought, you know what? Eh, I like that. I, I think that's kind of quaint. We just... Obviously, that was meant to be a joke sequence in Lower Decks, but we did it here, and it works, and I'm, I'm, I'm cool. Yeah, I, once I was pointed out to me, I quite liked it. Oh, I don't like Rayner's walk away. Ha 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 ha! The shit. I did. I like that part. That oh, that, was, that was the stupidest line delivery. He's great, apart from that one line. It's terrible. <laughs> it's very characterful, I think. So I disagree. Stupid. <laughs> Anyway, so these guys show up at get their retinas, scan, faces scanned, whatever. <laughs> and then we go in and we meet Fred. Which stand out. Stand out episode. I was like, is that what? What? <laughs> yeah. Really good makeup. You're right, it's the eyes. In the second watching, the eyes just pop yeah. in such a specific way. But the makeup's on point, the hair's on point, the dialogue's on point. It's not quite data, but it's very close to data. Obviously, this chap likes to use the giantest of words. That's his vibe, and it's great. Simpatico. It's great. It's, it's really good. I, and I, I, we said earlier, justice for Zaheel, justice for Fred. Hope he undies, which is totally doable. Um, yeah, great, really fun. Neil Walk says, "What species is Rainier supposed to be?" He, it's a species from DS Nine. Yeah. Somebody answered that on my uh, live last night. I can't remember though offhand. Yeah. Just submit, yeah, which is cool. I can't say I recognize it, but they had loads of one-offs. So yeah. we cool, great. Use an existing race, perfect. Do it. Love how he analyzes their names, and it's like they're all low, low vowel names. Spicy. Yeah, yeah I missed that first time. <laughs> it, it, yeah. He, he talks so quick, and um, but yeah, it's good. How can we make an excellent deal today? It sounds throat. like Badgie. Can I teach you a lesson? Yeah. <laughs> and he said he is 660 something years old, or last time we saw it. So this guy would have been built Picard season three, four, five, six, like like in that time. So probably by um, Brent Data, their descendants, because obviously Alton's dead. Um, yeah, probably Brent Spiner. Well, you said the last time you saw the Roman puzzle, a box like that was 667 mm -hmm. years ago, I think. We'll see in a second. So 2400s. Um, so, yeah, we're not sure exactly how old he was before that, but yeah. But it's unlikely he, you know, he's not in, he's not in Picard season 3, I don't think they're implying that. That's why they keep rounding down. They keep rounding to a number, except him, oh, of course. They do make a point that the person that built him, I don't think, was Soon, but they, it was based on Soon's design, so that's why they, 
serial number had AI in it. Yeah. That's why I assume it was data, because he Sorry. wanted to reference, because Alton was Noonien's son, retcon, um, so he could be, which would be weird if data's making a new son in his own image, based on his his look, but not his face. <laughs> which is kind of interesting. Yeah, There's a whole debate we have on that, that's really weird. but he's, he's tremendous. Um, and I also like in this scene, it, because they could easily have played it as if these, these, these guys, the, the, the villains, they actually knew what they were going for. They're just some whippersnappers who happen to stumble upon a Romulan ship, happen to find some stuff, happen to look to the right guy. It just happens to be meaningful. There is no, like, even the way the act is like, and this thing. Like, I like the vibe. It shows they're not this giant, it's not a giant plan. It's a giant, oh, we bumped into a cool thing. Okay, great. Like it. I like it. So... Brainer is a Keller Kellerin. Okay. Just so you guys know. Cool. Um, yes, uh, brought him isolinear co processors. Yeah, vintage pads and tricorders, still functional. Self stealing stem bolts. Go love that. Mm -hmm. And um, I think. this thing. Can you open it? Yep. It's like, ah, I want to show off how good I am. <laughs> Which I appreciate in Second Watch that obviously if you wanted to jump through the hoop of have a mystery box literally and solve it yeah. there's not that many characters in the universe that could do it that quickly so if you want to jump straight past it then this actually is a logical choice mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because you wouldn't you you know well yeah anything could have been inside unless they knew what was inside but i don't think they did and uh to, it's, it's risky for this dealer to open it uh, uh he yeah. could have said i can't but he wanted to prove himself i think also, anyway. there's probably passive scans for like explosive material and stuff. So yeah. no, it probably wasn't like. I didn't expect it could have been something like an ultimate weapon or something, not just a diary, oh. you know. In which case, they'd buy it. Well, the fact yeah. that he wants to cheat them straight away feels a bit dodge. Well, he does say oh. I have not encountered one of these in 622.7 years. Yeah. So very cool. He looks like a day over 620. But yeah, opens it. Good acting. I like the book. I love the way you just boop, boop. nice little detail. Uh, would, I would like to for you ask permission just to read the diary first. I know it's just tiny detail, but uh, that's what Data had done. We've been polite about it. Reads it, and it is very subtle as acting here. I commend him for like I didn't pick up the first time he was nervous. Yeah. The second time, it's really it's 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 not. I wouldn't say he's nervous. He's just not acting like he's in the first part of the scene. That's the difference. Yeah, what do you think? Uh, yeah, I get the feeling like he knew exactly what was going on because he read it all. Um, and then he tries to change the subject right away and does yes. a very data thing. Yep. No evidence of dry rot, yep. book lice. Yep. Uh, he was rambling. Those. Yeah, countless variations of family, genus, and species. I could count them. <laughs> but we don't have time today. We don't, we don't have the entirety of this day. So that was a weird line read. Uh, and then he tries to just speed it along. Therefore, I will take these items. Thank you very much. Pleasure to see both. And they're like, no. Three, but three Latinum bars. That's quite a lot, probably. I'm not sure I mean, it's still, still valued. I don't know why he didn't just say, fine, 20. You know? like Yeah. Uh, that seems very illogical just to try and to threaten them. And he does say these items will not be returned while holding on to the book. Like it's He knows its significance, which I think... Is we might get Fred back hopefully yep. this season. Yep, I hope. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, he was there potentially. He probably besides potentially, right? Like that. I mean, yeah. Potentially. But Locke gets very concerned about Maul and says, "Don't you ever hurt her?" And yeah, because uh, she shoots him. Like, he shoots her. Yeah. And then he uh, he he viciously shoots the the android and then many many shoots and yeah, he did. For now. For now. For now. And this is... Oh, oh yeah, go. Chris this points out, yeah. For an android, no super strength, no super speed, no super hearing, no super agility. Like, you, you could well, one, you could be quick. You could easily deal these... Why one, aren't you dealing these people? You data one, could say, one could say he's the wish version of an android because he wasn't made by a soon necessarily. We find out later that mm. the person that made him wanted to honor the soon, so that's mm. why he put in the serial number. So it could not be... It could, it could just be that he's not as advanced... He has the look, 
and is advanced, but not as advanced, maybe. Who knows? We might find out later. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. And then we get them outside. You know how we're supposed to ha- we should handle this, right? Yeah, Rigel 5. Ventar 4. Like, oh, for fuck's sakes. You know, what I, you know how I feel about that shit. It was important here. It showed they're not on the same page. It was effective. Sam, you know how should we deal with this situation? Uh, Vegas. Mission America 2. Vegas, 2009. 19. Oh. <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah, I knew where you were going, though. Look at yeah. Birmingham. 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 Uh, but they go in. We see many props. I like Burnham saying he has a family. That's kind of cute. That was a very nice small touch. About the, yeah. but also we nick him. <laughs> let's let's respect his family. Take him. It's like, hmm, okay. Yeah. It's fine. Uh, it's a bit fine to me. They work out that their ship's probably cloaked, so they're gonna get the sand runners. Everyone's dun, dun, always dun. cloaked. Always cloaked. Now they don't say why they didn't beam to their ship. Because they mm. could. Yeah. I don't think for a second you can say, we can track a beam. It's like, it takes one second, apparently, and then you can just lift off, right? Like, have the ship on standby. It is, it's fine. Although she does mention the dry dock and all bit, which I thought was interesting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, on second watch, I think this speed of chase is significantly too quick. Uh, too, too long, sorry. It did not keep me engaged a second time because a lot of fake shots of like burn in the front with LED wall and smoke in her face like it's not it's yeah they're awful muddy shots but we're, we're not quite there yet no I know I'm just saying like yeah I'm already like wanting to skip it a little bit because it's like uh, half as long but the next scene is yes. cool we do get to see the, the true makeup of, of Fred super really really super um, and it's actually this is actually quite an interesting little, little scene moment yeah, he's a surprisingly old model, dozens of generations before the kind of tech used for Gray's body. Um, imagine the engineer, engineering the circuitry to have functioned for so long, because he's been around a long time. So the serial number is AS0572Y, Alton Soon. And then this, you got to a good moment here from our scientific luminary. Uh, so whoever, whoever built Fred honored the doctor by putting his initials in the serial number centuries later we still speak his name what a legacy what about like, Noonien who actually invented it all I know that's what I know it's a good Stamets moment because that's what he wants he wants to be remembered for something uh, but it feels like the writers only watched a Picard and not the thing that Picard's based on yeah because that like he didn't like yes Al- Anton then helped make all the other synths but this is obviously a classic synth so you know uh, but I like it it's actually quite a cute little scene and for Samus being super irrelevant really in the grand scheme and, and Cole being very situational this was nice and together it was gentle uh, well yeah the whole a memory unit this old will have a lot of delicate wiring so it'll take a long time to download the data <laughs> Culver's like, we haven't used wires since way before the upgrade. We're going to need more replicators. And it's like, no, no, no. We're good. You you married a pack rat. I think that's funny. <laughs> it is. And it was very, um, he feels very despondent about his life. So I liked this like, low-key, like, my life sucks. But also I can help. It was a, it was a good balanced uh, performance there. And, and Colbert even gives a bit of a smile, like, okay, he has purpose now for at least this part, so I'm happy for him. <laughs> but I was also kind of intrigued. They've been in the future now two and a half years, give or take. Colbert is so in the future mindset. He's like, oh, this is so far beyond the stuff in our era. It's like, dude, when you came from, there's nothing even close to this in existence. And wires you've lived the entire life. You're, two and a half years, you've already entirely forgotten these wires. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it, like that... that w- then Stamets was an engineer. He would be more dealing with that stuff. So that's why he's more into it. But Cole was so acclimated that he's like, wow, it's so antiquated. What? Two years ago, sir. Two years. Yeah. The Scottish Nightmare. How would they know about the Soons? Because they put Grey into an artificial body. They would have had to do their research and read the up on that. They Google it. Right? It's the space future. Yeah. All the information is there. They would have had to get caught up. Plus, Colber had to put gray in a synth yeah. body so you would have researched it all you wouldn't you'd know about it that's how 
Yeah, literally, literally no issue. They have they have all the knowledge in the universe. They're absolutely fine. And they've yeah, a they have a Space Google. Yeah. Future Google. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> it's not just annoying they don't know who Noonien is, conceptually, because um, they really should. Yeah. Um, yeah, let me get the chase. Like, it's 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 now, fine, right? But it's just... I have, a qu- I have a question. Okay. She says, I haven't disliked someone this much in 930 years. Very specific. That's going back to, like, season one. Who is she talking about? I can't quite place it. Was it Lorca? L- Lorca, if I was a betting man, yes. Yeah. But okay. only from his Trump Trumpian swap, because she was fine with him until that point, give or take. But also that's him, that's her just doing a pun, I think. That's her just saying, since I was in the past. Mm. She doesn't literally mean that, I don't think. I don't think. I don't necessarily think she's in my mind. It's just a case of, sit. you know, everyone in the future is great, except this one guy. Uh, oh, I, I will say, I, I really like the CG of how they zip off. That I thought was a really good integration of fake to real. And also, they do say they rented all through these speeders. So they brought money... And they paid people to rent the speeders, they didn't just steal them. Because it's not a federation world. Very small note to have, but I appreciate that attention to detail. Um, and and Rainer, even though you know, he, he zips off himself first. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, get Tilly almost getting arrested. Tilly it. Caffeinated Tilly. Yes. Kiss my caffeinated ass. Uh, you're attempting to break into a secure federation database in violation of security pro- protocol 6 alpha. Yeah, just a bit. And and Vance is like, you guys can leave. It's fine. It's a sh- it's a shame we didn't stop you in time. Oh no, my <laughs> finger fell onto the console. And I learned the secret of the secret. It's pretty great. This scene, I, I, honestly, I, I am still, as I said in other reviews, I'm still annoyed that I don't know. Think she's this smart to break into top level red security clearance. 800 years, yeah. like, they say in the end of this episode, this is, like, mega secure, and she hacks it during the course of the mission. This is, like, minutes. So she's an abs- She's the the genius that beats all the security systems. I mean, Tarka from last season would be impressed, I'm sure. And yeah. one bloody-handed! <laughs> Why are we they- We don't need two hands to be a hacker. All those- Oh, exactly. I was just going to say, that's just a trope of... <laughs> and all the shit going on screen. <laughs> what, I, what I couldn't help wondering is, why don't they just use old school Romulan encryption? It'll take it much longer. Yeah, they still, it still takes a while to break it still. Yeah. I just, I just find that a bit silly. And also, she's in theory drunk as well. A drunk one handed Tilly in seven minutes can beat the top encryption of Starfleet. No, she can't! But Ray Ricks can with five pounds. <laughs> Says, Could Fred have been one of these soon type androids since the Federation mass produced and revolted in Children of Mars short trek? So the the F eight series. Fate. No. <laughs> and the answer is no, yes. He was bald and dumb. Yeah, they were not programmed to be that sophisticated. But good thought, so. but no, this is they they were clearly giving us a very literal He's data reference. Way. Which is great. Like that's cool. Yeah. But Advance is great here. Um, <coughs> clearly, very worried. He said, "This is this." Is well, he weird. wants to find out the information too. Nobody's telling him anything, yeah. and he's an admiral. He was just—he's just annoyed and wants to find out what's going on. That's what I think is happening. Mm-hmm. Then we get the Romulan in a kilt skirt for some reason. Not yeah, quite, not quite sure why. He's in a kilt and also no shoulder pads. Apart from that, it's great. Uh... And still black hair, so he, you know, he's he's a little bit younger in the TNG episode, but he, I guess he, I mean, obviously I aged slowly, but yeah. not that long after. And I do like how in Second Watch, all the most important information is lost from the recording. <laughs> but the Twin Moon, which is why a uh, man who is in suit is like, wow, I keep going to the different moon planets, and she's like, you're wrong, it's not this one. Okay, he just saved the moon, I get it. Now, how did they get this? How did they get this recording? Did he transmit to Starfleet at some point? Did the Roman Empire give it to them randomly at some point? You know, it's. it's uh... I don't think there's any answers there. No, I don't know. I mean, you know, we don't know what our. Oh no, no, no! Navarre and Romulus came together. 
So I suppose it would... Yeah, I guess they could have given it at some point willingly. Yeah, okay. That's fine. That's fine, I guess. I'll accept it. Yeah. But it's great to see him alive and well. Same costume, obviously, which is really nice. Explains I made so it. It is the same actor? Did you look into it? No, same costume. Like I'm saying, that, that's why they, that's why I was wondering earlier. I was like, you know, to build oh. a full TNG replica. But it makes more sense. They do it on the real guy first, and then they, um, you know, mummify him. Yeah, not that old. Great, great makeup, though. I mean, he looks... Change your woman. Yeah, no. Back to the chase. Very Star Wars. Um, Bill also... Barkley, no, we don't see a pic of the founders. No, we don't. Or the progenitors. Anyway. <laughs> Just because the same actress with similar makeup doesn't mean it's the same makeup with the same character. Because it isn't. Yeah. Yes. Uh, but guys, yeah, Super Chase thoughts, comments, and questions... Um, we love your interaction. We are over now. Yeah, goodness, we're, we're a long way through, guys. Keep super chatting. This is obviously what supports the channel. Um, we'd love to get some more reaction to, to show that you like Discovery or like what we do here. Uh, any and all does make a big difference. So uh, keep it up, guys. We rely on them to do what we do. Indeed. But what was your thought? 90 people here. Hit like. Yeah. So what was your, thought on, the, what was your thought on the chase overall? Uh, what you just said about the second viewing, how it's kind of long and pointless, it could have been summed up much better. I agree. And I thought that the first time. Mm. Second time, I actually enjoyed it a bit more. I got more information out of it, listening to their conversation. Mm. First time was a little bit like all over the place yeah. for me. Well, it shot very all over the place. So, yeah, I, it could have been very shrunk down, I think. It's just funny because the, the, the exterior stuff is very impressive. Because it's all CG, and they cut to the people, and it's the smallest, cheapest looking shots ever. That are fine, but it's like the, the disparity is quite significant. Normally, you do it on a full green screen, because they'd be on like a fake bike, and the green, they'd have to do everything in post, so it wouldn't matter how close you got. In this, they want that depth of field of the LED wall to hide the fact they're on an LED wall. Um, you know. I do like the fact that the Sandrunners have shields, though. Yes. They're getting shot at. They got like shot yeah. for some reason. They'd be real <laughs> like, dead otherwise. Yeah. 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 I mean, they they took no no prisoners. <laughs> why? What is the purpose of a snowmobile <laughs> having snowmobile. shields? I mean, for, if you're going extreme snowmobiling and you fall off a mountain, the shield might save you. I guess. Maybe that's why. But Look, everyone has cloaks. Everything has shields. Why? It's like why wouldn't you? You know, shields are a dime a dozen, right? Because right, as 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 a kid, I was always like, it'd be cool if you could invent shields for cars. That way you couldn't get in car accidents. You, would, you wouldn't wreck your car. Yeah. Make damage to the shield enough that you could damage your car, possibly. But yeah. See, you won't see yourself, Stuart. Good job. There you go. Kid thinking. <laughs> Everything has shields. Sure. Everything has shields. Stuart, they shield now? They shield now. <laughs> Looks like a scene from The Mandalorian. I agree, Bill Barkley. I agree. I mean, it is very Star Wars, but it is also well done. Yeah, but it's very Star Wars, yes. But that's you get the whole thing of they got this escape network of tunnels. Once they get in there, they can come out on the other side of the planet. Entirely meaningless in second watch. Yeah, but there's an entrance that has been rigged with an explosive, so that's where they're going. Okay, sure. Yeah, doesn't matter. Gosh, there's so uh, many close-ups of the Dodd damn show. And also, a, th a Thry visual of three actors' close-ups. That was a bold editing choice. Oh, that was awful. It was like a comic book. It was great. It, it was, was so dumb. With my new setup. I These are and blow up the things. Okay, cool. Yeah, my cousin Avalanche. Yeah. Which I, I, it's funny, I missed that one line the first time and the second. I mean, I didn't care the second time, but I missed it the first time. So I was like, okay. the. And then obviously it's obvious with Avalanche later. But it's like, okay, cool. Rainier is sure that an avalanche is not going to happen. Which it won't. There's like a 30% chance that it could have happened, I think they said. And he's like, yeah, the 70%. Or like, yeah, it was quite, quite fun. Uh, until, ba until bad things happen. And they um, they nuke it a bit with a, a giant missile barrage. It looks great. It looks tremendous. And uh, we do the old classic thing of, what do you care more about? The mission or the people? What a trope of good guys in sci-fi. You know what? Totally fine with it. Totally fine with it. This is what happens. We're the good guys after all, so we are going to good guy all day. And the, the, the avalanche is reaching speeds of two, 200 kilometers an hour. Just so you know. <laughs> now, I, I 
I was left thinking instantly, why the hell aren't they beam away from the avalanche? Because Jesus Christ, leave. But they do say, Washcom does say, oh, where the, the, the stuff is stopping it. So they do address that pretty, not early, but as long as it's there, right? That's all that matters. Um, and the inclusion of, oh no, there's two people in the path, beam them out. It's so useless and doesn't go anywhere. It's not even needed. You could have cut that whole thing out. Who gives a shit? Of course, they're going to save people, but it just could have made this shorter is what I'm saying. Uh, although they were introduced in the first scene, they are sitting by a bike and they're lingered on for half a second. Oh, yeah, that's right. They are there. Okay, I did forget that. Okay. But the fact is the shots are so close that I entirely, my brain didn't actually catch the fact that she was going to run into them and they beamed because it was, it, was, it was so one frame. But I was like, that must have what happened. I just didn't see it. Yeah. You needed a wide... Um, or just, yeah, cut it out. Like, save yourself $5,000 and three artists working for a week. <laughs> like, you're saving yeah. all the people. You don't need to humanize it by seeing a few people in, in um, whatever. Uh, and then you get a very well-tracked map thing with Adira and, and Stamets in engineering. It's not... That's actually episode two, but it's not bullshit. He says that, yeah, he says that in episode two. But tremendous motion tracked map. I mean, flawless, right? Like, um, Adira, Adira's there. She's helping. She's almost so flustered. Every situation. This one, yes, time's limited, but even with Tilly later, yeah. she's like, ah, I don't know. And again, time was limited because they were being attacked on the planet's surface. That's like, true. Calm down. Just. I understand the time is of the essence, but you need to not act so nervous all the time. Everything's going to be okay. Or not. Either way. Well, it's, it's, you acting like an idiot won't change that. It, it's not one-dimensional acting. It's just if you only have situational scenes where you're not in any meaningful way a center, you're just sort of reacting, and that's what the character does. So therefore, it's what they do. Yeah. It's okay. Uh, but it, is there idea? To, to to use the shields. Daft idea, um, but, you know, bold. Yeah, I don't have a problem with the ships going into atmosphere. A lot of people are like, that scene's stupid. The ship shouldn't be able to do that. And it's like, how many times have we seen Discovery? The first episode we see Discovery in a planetary atmosphere. Shinjo, yeah. Well, sorry, yes. Um, yeah. But uh, you know what I mean? Like and It goes into the thing. Kronos core, yeah. into the crust. And in Strange New World, you have the Enterprise hovering above a city. Yep. Like, D look at us. I think it's fine. Yeah. The but... Discovery also spores onto a planet and shoots the killing birds of prey. Yes. Yes, it does. Like, into atmosphere. Like, it's fine, right? It, it's it's fine. I mean, it, it's, it's incredibly... Um, it's incredibly fast and furious action movie trope. Yes. But the thing is, if this was any other era, I would be like... Huh. Mega future... 31st century, floating nacelles, like... Of, yeah, I wouldn't like, buy this in TOS at all, but yeah, for yeah. this, I don't, have, I don't have any problem with I mean, it. Even the E or Voyager, but like, no, it's not, no, it's, that's a bit weird. But this is like, uh, this is, if they can't do it, um, well, I do like the fact that you assume this thing's got giant, amazing shields, but kinetic force is not what shields are designed for. That's a, that's a little fun limitation. So um, I like that it's, it's just an avalanche, like right? It's just some rock. Right? Fast rock. You've dealt with big things. But it's a limitation even then. So, uh, you know, it, it's dumb. But it's a great visual. It's just dumb. It's kind of what we thought Beyond might be. And it actually wasn't. <laughs> uh, but yeah, more chase. Don't really care. Blah, blah, blah. And you know what? Even the side characters. Why aren't you giving Detmer, Washakum, like, why isn't this their time to shine? Nope. Just, they're still muted. Like, they're not even there, really. So you get reaction shots from them, but yes, you don't really... It's just... It's a cluster. <laughs> what, what, do, do, yeah. It could have been abbreviated so much, this whole sequence. Like, I like Adira fine, but have it be... Like Strange Worlds do, Strange New Worlds would do, the bridge crew coming together to form a solution. Like, this is great. That would have been a great time to show. Turn time to shine, and they just didn't. And it's like they have these options. They just they choose not to do it because they're extras. Getting a paycheck. Mm -hmm. Strange. 
Matthew says the Enterprise isn't even in the atmosphere in Earth and TOS. Yes, but it's having a hard time. It's it's falling. It's it's trying to get itself out of the atmosphere. Mm. It was very sluggish and not really designed for it. So mm. until Strange New Worlds, which is a, your older ship that can do it fine. Hi, it's, Donnie, it's, fine. it's fine. It's <clears> fine. <throat> but yeah. Anyway, they save stuff. the city. They save yeah. all the civilians. I, it's memory. a good moment. I'll give him credit. Like the satisfaction here is actually pretty decent. Yeah. And the two ships are sort of popping in with the booms and seeing that lighting. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a fun, stupid sequence. Yes. But then Lock and Maul get away, and Rainier nopes out of the conversation. <laughs> I wish I could say it's been a pleasure, but gone. And I'll say that again: the the Rainier shot is incredibly fake looking. The uh, all of his shots, like like this shot on the live, the the two shot he beams out, that looks so bad. That's like nineteen ninety seven TV movie. For whatever reason, I'm guessing that's a a green screen recomposite, but it's really bad. Um, even his close up looks super fake. Or the angle's wrong. I don't know. It's funny because the space that the the crash shot was amazing, and then they look terrible. Yep. Like just out of focus, blurry mess. Kind of paintingly like. But it's very distracting because it just looks really, really fake. Now, is that just me? Or did you think also it looks just really f- like worse than green screen? I didn't think it looked fake. I just didn't think it looked good. <laughs> it just. And looking at it now, I can definitely. Like the shot of after Rainier nopes out and you got Book and uh, Burnham there from the front, you can tell that that's just the wall there yeah. behind them. Yeah, they said F it, we're just going to do everything really out of focus, which just makes a big mess of colour. But I also think, ah, they're not bright enough. Desert planet, yeah. sun, they have a lot of shadow. Then I, I, I guess you could argue maybe there's like debris from the whatever. Oh, there's a lot of dust and, yeah. But, yeah, but sand if, you look at the, if you look at the wide shot, it's a really bright freaking day. Rain is bright. I guess you could, well, no, yeah. Uh, and then suddenly they're really dark. That's why it looks fake too. They, they're not yeah, I guess maybe they thought we can't because obviously the brighter you make a screen, the less detail you get because you're losing it. They probably thought well, we can't make it a Sunday, Sunday, a sunny day. Yeah, that just looks really, really. Yeah, yeah. I wonder why. But, yeah. but they have a conversation here. If I should have called, no, I should have called. We should have both called. And she's like, "This is weird. I don't know how to act around you anymore." Yeah. Because yeah, it's weird for both of us. Hard to move on. So but should yeah. we move on? It's like yes. It's like damn. Yeah, I think we, I think we should. Yeah. Stra- which seems really weird given the second episode. Like he's still there and they're trying to have some chemistry and maybe well, he's forced to be there by Vance. Yeah, but it was odd to have such a sort of resolutiony resolution. Um, and also, you you really should be thinking about chasing the people. Yeah. And they they have a lot of pause heart to heart moments. This episode that are. Just, just a bit odd, um, and very, very fake looking. And then Spore Drive um, sort of messes up a little bit. Steve, uh, you know, they've gone straight from the atmosphere. <laughs> all that yeah, dust. I, love, I, love the, I do love the dust coming out. It's good. It's, it's, it's yeah. Nice touch. I, I like the dry dock and even the ring. Well, the, yeah, so it's a good looking dry dock. Um, but what, what, what a, what a play to Spore Drive literally into the parking spot to go to the dry dock. I mean, what a. They could have just Spore Drive right into dry dock. Yeah, that's a bit too dangerous. Now this is a pet peeve I have though. They've clearly, yeah. <laughs> they've clearly spore drive directly from the atmosphere, because the dust is still on them. If they went to space, it would have fallen off at our, our exit, at least some of it. Um, they're not going to wait around for hours. They're going to wait around for seconds or minutes. Um, Rainer can't leave quickly. He might report to Starfleet, or he might think. Yet somehow, President of Federation says, "I heard a rumor that you and another Starfleet ship was on a planet." She's not the president of the Federation. Of uh, the Vulcan of uh, Navarre. But this happened probably less than five minutes ago. Unless she was in the room where Vance got the call saying we're heading back, we crashed. Which is therefore it's not a rumour, it's that I overheard. What the hell does she mean? It's not a rumour, there's no chance of information. Like, a rumour implies someone on deck seven phoned their mum, who's a lunch lady, saying, did you hear what happened last week when we got crashed? And then she tells a friend, like, it's a stupid setup for a scene. Really, really stupid. And Bill Barkley, you see the dots cleaning off the sand in the next episode, mm-hmm. but yes. But do you know what I mean, Stuart? Second watch, that annoy you more? Once I pointed out the illogicalness. 
No, yes, no, no, because we don't know how much time has passed. We don't know if they sent a report and we're on our way. We got to, yeah. Everything's instant, though, in the future. It, it's very much, is, is this episode's uh, Giorgio, I like, I like that orange railing. It's like, it's it's not. But they didn't rewrite the script. They just kept the wrongs. Like, they didn't, it's just, a, it's just they, did, they didn't realize in the rewrite that they zipped straight home. Or there was meant to be a scene in between. They just didn't cut. They just didn't take that out of the dialogue. It just reminds me of that. Well, if the visual wouldn't have included the dust coming off the ship, yep. it would yep. have been better. Mm-hmm. Yep. But that's also at the same time, that dust coming off the ship is very cool. <laughs> so. It just bugged me because it doesn't make any sense. And they're doing so well, you know? But yeah, they have a heart to heart here where. Seriously. If, yeah. if I lost you or if anything happened to you, I couldn't handle it. So. She's like, well, maybe we should make this more of a, of a thing. And he's like, are you asking me to marry you? She's like, That's what some cultures would call it. Yes. Well, he skipped a bit that brought it in. He says, I'm, I'm taking the offer. I'm going to work here now. Yeah. So he's committed first. And she instantly instantly jumps on that. And it's, I mean, for a Vulcan, it's quite sweet. It's logical <laughs> in this sense. Uh, I think the acting here is pretty, both pretty, pretty great, actually. Um, yeah, and, and and Saru, you know, he's acting through a mask, which is a lot of latex and such, and he shows a good amount of like. <clears throat> I do, I nice. do like where he says, "Discovery is my home and my family. You are also my home, my family, and somehow so much more." So I'm going to accept the offer, and. Uh, Although, boy, if she yeah. breaks up with him, he's like, "I left my entire family for you. Don't choose your politics over me, uh, Tarina." Tarina yeah. is her name. But it's actually a good scene. Um, but a very abrupt. Come off a giant action piece. And also come off another romance plot. It's like, what is it with this episode and having four, four different romance subplots? And they're all given significant time. So the second Saru subplot li- uh, in one ep- in I guess we're going to lovey-dovey season? Because there's a lot of lovey-dovey already. There is, yeah. It's weird. <laughs> Fine, in the next weird. episode, we got to deal with Adira and Gray, where Adira's like, I'm happy being on my own. I don't know how to feel about that. And it's, oh, now we're forced to go to Trill. But yeah. Anyway, that's for next time. This it is. Well, next, next time, because we got. <laughs> we still have to do next time, next next week. Because they double bill. Anyway, Burnham comes into Sick Bay, and they managed to have downloaded the last 15 teraquads of, of his ocular processing unit. And that was just where, that's just before lunch, after lunch. Yeah. Got a good look at the diary. Yeah, seriously. <clears throat> Even though his hand's covering a lot of it, I guess to just extrapolate what's in there. Well, no, no, but... there's a, there's a, no, there's a, if the, if the data guy thought he saw everything, he probably did it in a way where, like, as it turns, he sees the whole thing. I'll try this one. Yeah, okay. And but I'm, I'm, I hope that's going to play in later because there's the entire thing. There you go. Done. Then she pauses on the planet picture and says, It's in the Veline system. I love how she also looks at Stamets and says, Could you enlarge that? <laughs> no. We, we're, it's, we're incapable of doing that, even though you know all I have to do is this. Which you could also do. Yeah, exactly. Or well, Azor to do it like you did about the other thing. Yep. <laughs> It, it, it's the we want to give people dialogue. It's fine. It, it, yeah. Well, I do. I do quite enjoy. Are you okay, Michael? Yeah, I just didn't have time to change. <laughs> Not a necessary moment. It's like, yeah, you know what? This is a cool costume and makeup. Yeah, just, yeah. Come in, sneak. We'll do a second day of makeup. Just have a slight jo- one small joke on scene. Well, yeah, yeah. I like the it. way Colbert said it. It's like, are you okay? Like, I'm a doctor. I can help you out there. You know, it's you're kind bleeding of a job. in the head. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Although we don't hear the news from Tilly, which I thought we were going to hear, so I'm glad we kind of skipped over that. Uh, yeah. But yeah, secrets revealed. Uh, I wonder why she knows this planet is the planet. Maybe she knows Promelian tech, because now from the second episode, it's Promelian graveyard world. Um, so I wonder if she's a Promelian knowledge person? Maybe. Yeah. But she goes and front, confronts Kovic and says, you're looking for a planet with twin moons. Not this one. And not this one, yeah. As he clearly um, has been stalking planets for the last X number of years. And he's like, I'm building a team. And she's like, you already have a team. Uh, but I want to be part of this mission. 
Do you want me to come aboard? And then she goes on to say, for every you're looking at for every two moon system in the in the Federation database, and it might take you a few hundred years, or you can have me help you out. Of course, she kind of forced him into this because this is where certainly her going against the rules. She broke into Starfleet stuff, taught a mega special important thing, told him, and his reaction is, huh, yeah. You know, she's so god. Like, don't get involved. If you want secrets or or <coughs> stuff kept, just just don't tell. Just don't bring Burnham. Have any other captain. They'll respect your authority. Um, because that's the thing, you don't want the secret to go further. That said, in the second episode, they just like spout about, this is the power of creation, people! Stop telling me all the secret! Is that better than the power of math? I, I, I hope you would catch that. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, he yeah. he goes on to talk about um, Dr. Villick and uh, one of the greatest scientists of his day, and we see scenes from The Chase... Yep. Which was like, I was like, woof, awesome. That's one of the best TNG episodes, in my opinion. And then they talk about John Luke Picard, how he discovered the progenitors and uh, created all life in the galaxy as we know it. You, me, Saru. Yeah. Anybody with two eyes and a, a nose. And this was definitely, this was the, the cell they needed at the end of the episode uh, to, not, to, to leave. Because most people, I think, give th at least one episode, right? So to end on TNG, after we already teased TNG by showing a, a Romulan, like, actually committing fully was tremendous. And it just yeah. felt like coming home in a way. You know, this is a really interesting subplot that was ignored. I think it's a good episode. I always thought it was fun to see different factions. It's memorable because it's obviously the, the first time the, the changeling actress appears in very similar makeup. They obviously knew her from that. They brought her in. Yeah. And it, you know... Like, it was never decanonized. Like, we didn't evolve. We were made. We were placed in all our worlds. Like, the galaxy was seeded by another alien race. That's pretty big, at least the ones that were like us. Pretty big news. You know, we didn't evolve from apes. We were put here. It's pretty yeah. big. Let's just come over it. Scottish Nightmare, how did they get those photos? That was a recording of the, uh, the, uh, the boy mission. I don't know. Tricorder readings. O also, holographic recreation. Like, we know exactly yeah. who was there, what age they were, what the location like, created recreation. It's fine. This is the mega future. Yeah. Like, like they almost could, if they really wanted to just masturbate all over the scene. Imagine, because, hit me out here. Imagine if he said computer change and it, they recreated the scene on the holodeck and had and had actors in the TNG costumes, like back of the heads. Like, that's Picard's fake hair. Like, so they could do, you know, it's, 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 it's planet hell. They could easily rebuild that as a little set piece or on an LED wall, have some random Romulans, wouldn't care if they weren't the same actors, that's fine. Like, that would have been, you know, that's the back of Picard's head. Or even play the scene, rotoscopes pull out. You know, that would have been, that would have been like next level shit, playing a TNG episode or, or just like Trials and Tribulations, like picking the angles from the TNG episode and having them interposed. Yeah. That would have been, inc this is, this is great, no issues, but that would have been like, Wow. Yeah. Wow. And she goes on to say there is a system in the outer sector of the beta quadrant Valene. It doesn't have a planet with two moons, yes. but one of its worlds, Lyric, has three moons, two of which move in perfect sync, hence twins. Which is a fun moon. fun concept. And it would have to have been I just this occurred to me, it would have to have been somewhere the Romulan could reach practically in a smaller ship. So beta quadrant obviously where Romulus is, that's their space. So it wouldn't be Delta Quadrant or Gamma Quadrant, practically. It wouldn't make sense. It'd have to be reachable by his people. It would be the intent. Yeah, that actually makes a lot of sense. Because I, they kept mentioning Beta Quadrant a lot. That That's why, actually. Mm -hmm. You get so used to the spore drive when you have the spore drive that's like, oh, yeah, has to be closed with everyone else. You know. Um, yeah, what a... And then you get the trailer lines, which felt a bit obnoxious in the trailer. But the ultimate power, it's like, yeah, it kind of is in a, in a galactic sense. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, and she of course ends with "Let's fly." Didn't like that, but that's okay. Bit, bit too gimmicky for me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Strong end. Um, strong end. Crazy, really. If you think about it. And yes, we know there was a this season on. We'll talk about that separately. Maybe another live next week. 
Yep, yep, because there are many things to see and learn and tease, because everything there is fair game. Uh, that? Anyway, that is the end of the episode, everyone. It is. Um, first episode of season five, the first of the last ten, and possibly the first pilot of the of the uh, Academy show. <laughs> Yeah. Go vote on the poll. Will Captain Rainier end up being a villain in this season? Yes or no? We've got 74 votes already. Like a few more. Well, I think we can end that. I can do another one. I think that's pretty good. Okay. Uh, well. Yeah, 73% no. Good. Good. Don't yeah, don't don't be ruining that. He's got a very much a Captain Shaw and Lorca vibe going on about him. So. Just like <clears> dickhead. <throat> He gives more of a blunt vibe than dickhead vibe. Those two have more of a, like a, you'll be mean, like he's not going to, uh, but yes, uh, similar. Regardless, I like him, so. We never agree on characters, so it's fine. So we're coming at that point where we give our final scores and reviews, guys, and we want you to do the same. Please super chat in with your scores out of 10 for this episode. And uh, we will read those. I will read those after we give ours. Um, but yes, we would like to hear your scores out of 10. So please super chat in with them. It would be very helpful and support the channel at the same time. And we get to hear your opinions. So please do so. Also hit that like button. 73 people here. 72 likes. That's pretty good. I still want 80, though. I'm sure eight people haven't hit like yet. Please do so. It really helps us out. We appreciate it. So do it. It looks like this. It's a thumbs up. Just saying. All right. Wait, are we season five? Uh, hmm? Wait, so this is season five, isn't it? Yes. <sighs> you typo at the very last minute. <sighs> hold, on, hold on. You'll have a poll to vote on in a minute. <laughs> Just saying. And it will be... Do you now think this will be the best season of Discovery? Yes, I'm convinced. Season 5. Season 1, Brian Fuller, OG season. Nope, season 2, Pike is the best. And nah, season 3 or 4 is the best. Yeah, because they're very... We only different. have four options on the polls, guys. Just in this case, you didn't know that. That's why. Yeah, but 3 and 4 are quite similar in their own way anyway. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> So, this is where Sam asked me. Yeah. What a what a what a day, Stuart. What a day. Sure. Yeah. So this is your time, guys. To check your thoughts, comments, questions, review scores. As you said, we really would appreciate a few more. Um, this is you know a big review of the week. Uh, help us out. Yes, Stuart. What do you think of this episode now, in our rather in depth retrospective? And has your opinion changed? Given we've now talked about it for coming on two full hours uh opinion hasn't really changed except for that chase scene which the first time i saw it i thought was a little long and drawn out and yeah it gets worse every time i see it <laughs> and talk about it now um, and you pointed out a lot of good visual things that were kind of like eh. so yeah i mean this this episode couldn't shouldn't have been 59 minutes they could have whittled this down to 52 maybe take some stuff out i mean we usually love seeing longer run times but i don't think this one necessarily warranted it there was a lot of wasted i mean not wasted but dialogue in that chasing that wasn't necessary in my opinion but it was still a great kickoff to season five um i'm really happy i'm just hoping that the rest of the season kind of follows suit and it stays good but at the same time <laughs> it's kind of sad because now we know it's this is the last one it's it's one of those deals, right? So uh, everybody has something to do, and it's good to see old school Tilly back. Uh, Kovic, I love how the, the still have him around. Uh, Admiral Vance, I mean everyone, even the uh, even the uh, president of Navarre. There's a lot of good characters here. We didn't get a lot of the president in this one. I know she's in the next one for a little bit, but. I'm actually kind of surprised by this. Uh, as you said on our first review, it felt very Star Trek to you, and it's absolutely what it was. It wasn't just the the callback at the end there that did it either. That just kind of locked it in as like, all right, they know what they're doing. Um, 
pacing wise and everything, I think it was fine. Um, it it didn't slow down at all, it, but except for that chase scene, which ironically was the fastest thing in the, but too drawn out, you know. So pacing wise, that kind of ruined it a little bit. But other than that, I think everything was good. The inclusion of Fred and just those little touchstones, also fantastic. You've got the universe, you've got the canon, use it. We were, if you would have done that in season one, you know, things might have been better for you. I'm just saying. Uh, the introduction of Rainer. I like the character. I like the actor. Can't wait to see more of him. We do get more of him in episode two, which, by the way, will be on Tuesday, guys, when, when we review that live. So tune in for that. But, um, yeah. Stamets, I think, is still a little flat and wooden, unfortunately. I hope that he gets a little bit better this season. Uh and I think he will. I think he's going to play an important part and be remembered for something great at the end of this. So that's kind of where his arc is leading. So I'm just, yeah, I'm, I'm impressed. I'm impressed. I'm impressed. And I wasn't expecting to like this. I wasn't excited going into this. But I'm kind of blown away. I also like the fact that we've seen a lot of the footage we've already seen from trailers already. So there's a lot of who knows what's coming up. That's kind of nice. So score-wise... Um, how are we doing this one? Um, all Discovery, all Discovery, and this season, which of course is just the personal enjoyment, um, and all Trek. Nope, do we do that too? Okay. Yep. I mean, you can if personal... you want to, but um, yeah. Would you like to do that this season? No, not really. There we go. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, for this season, like for just enjoyment factor, yes, yeah, enjoyment. Yeah. Um, I would probably give this one a. 7.4, but then the end bumped it up to like a 7.6. Okay. It was still a good episode without the ending, but the ending just kind of clinched it for me. For all of Discovery, um, I'll give it an 8.3. Feels right. There you go. I don't know. It has been a while uh, since we discovery as well. In fairness, the the old memory yes. banks were a bit like. I think it was March two thousand twenty two was the last time we did discovery. It's a long time ago. And then we did not want to review it all again because it was not worth it <laughs> from a mental perspective. <laughs> we had enough life to live. Yes. Yes. And it was weird because it was the. It was a Picard finale and the Discovery opener, I believe. Yeah, we were immediately moving on to something else, which was didn't help. So no, it didn't. Uh, it, it devalued both, which was like, but, but, but why? People spend a lot of time on these. Why would you not? Uh, but guys, what again, you? super chat your thoughts. Guys, we'd like to know a few more final thoughts. Um, yeah, super chat your scores in. We'll read those at the end here. Um, but what about you? What did you think about now that we've discussed it? Has anything changed for you? In a sense, yes, because we've stopped and thought and discussed, which is kind of important. But it is also, with any action movie, the second one is never going to be the same because you know what's going to happen. Or, or any mystery box episode, right? Like that. So I have to still think of that first watch, that first experience. Um, like I said, not too much added on second viewing, but not much taken away. Uh, Discovery used to be in the early seasons used to be there's this plot hole there's this bad character moment there's this dumb dialogue there's this canon mistake like this episode is is pretty you know even the Burnham decisions of the you know crash and ship whatever like they're a bit odd but they're not necessarily un, un, unjustified and, you know they're okay like this is not one of those things where I'm left thinking oh no or even eh uh, we're at the point where there's so little bad there's a case of how much good is in the season or in the episode, right? And that's great to be at, right? Writing was was pretty decent, not amazing, but pretty decent. Um, just as general. Um, but what they focused on was the scenes that had, you know, Raina was very well written, tremendous, and acted tremendous. That really bumped it up. Uh, F Frank, Fred, Fred, excellent. Again, great writing. The villains, again, great writing. They were done very, very well. And these are all things with limited time and yet given a lot of personality, which. For one episode in, we like them all. Hell an achievement. Good job. Um, the romance subplots aren't bad. They're just odd. 
considering so there's never been a romance show really ever like properly um we kind of skipped the book thing and just led it led into it and it was just allowed just do a thing um certainly the sets aren't different <laughs> but i like the new sets at the uh at the, at the academy it is definitely sort of bloated a little bit as an episode but you want to see more than just burnham it's just odd that it's all of the non-season one characters in a sense that got the extra time like it's as if in Voyager, by the end of the season, we only got we only got episodes where the Doctor Seven and J- uh, Janeway talked, and everyone else said yes, Captain, and just ignored them for the most part. But we but we love our new Talaxian friend, and we love our new Bajoran friends. Like why don't we talk, why don't our regulars do anything? Like that again is disappointing. And they've had five years to seven years to learn. And they've never they've never learned they're never gonna learn the lesson, right? They've proven it in this episode. They're not gonna give a team feel. And that's sad. But then again, we've got better scenes than everyone else who are more interesting characters. Because what is Bryce as a character? I don't know. And can they really spend the last season setting him up as a character? Or give time to the new people who are meaningful in the season, right? Like, so I get it. They've, they've had the chance. Um, action is pretty good. CG is great. Um, Warp thing was good at the start. Uh, yeah, like I said, not only really, uh, some small pacing things with the romance stuff. It, it, every time it brings to a halt, but none of the bad, particularly just odd. Um, and so the, the chase is visually great, but also visually muddy. It's a weird hybrid of both. But it's still impressive. I, as an artist, I know the amount of work went into that. I commend for trying. You know, it, um, score-wise, yeah, I enjoyed this far more than Discovery in general. Because, like I said, not many plot holes, not many giant flaws. Characters feel better. Burnham's a, a decent lead. Like, cool, yeah, she leads it well. She has some subtlety in this one. Um, and the links to canon are thoroughly appreciated and encouraged. But didn't feel super pandery either. You know, the data didn't, could have been so many things or not so many things. So why not make it a data and add that? Just just add a certain vava voom, right? Cool, excellent. Um, nice to have. Yeah, just a fun, a fun ride. Mm-hmm. Which is nice because we were worried. Ironically, <clears throat> we thought it might be too much of a ride this season, like too much of a uh, going across the galaxy. Now, the next episode is more India Jonesy in that regard, I would say. This is a more balanced piece. But for me, and I said in our initial review, first thing I said, my favourite Discovery episodes. So the score is going to reflect it's just proper yeah. Trek, right? Um, enjoyment factor, um, I think, now I think it'll, this whole season will be different. For enjoyment, for, and this is obviously a Discovery scale, right? This is what I know it can do. I'm happy to give episode one a 9.2, straight out of the gate, for quality of episode i think the, the the flaws are relatively minimal and all discovery 9.4 like this is this is significantly better than almost everything in the show um yeah in the nines i think it'll probably be an exception because there's so much good other stuff in it i think this will be a, a high point of the season like because season two and three the first ones yeah. were bigger and better that was a trend yeah. but i'm happy to give it in the nines i think it, it for just for discovery now if we're going for all of trek scale is for me would be high sevens, low eights. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, high average trek, but still on that scale. But for discovery, this is, for me, this is this is this is right up there. <laughs> well, Aeon throws in fourteen dollars Canadian, so thank you. Always enjoy the live breakdowns. Thanks, Trek Yards. Well, thank you for enjoying you. them, for showing up. We appreciate you guys. Yeah, so. that's lovely. Thanks so much for the the support. Let's take a look at this poll. Yeah. Uh, do you now think this will be the best season of Discovery with 33 votes? Yeah. 67% said, yep, I'm convinced season five. I am too, honestly. So. <laughs> Although we did uh, say that for season two. And we were yeah. royally screwed. Royally. Yeah. But. And I remember the first two episodes of the last season where we were like, this is, this is good, this is better now. And then it's like, no. Well, then Quajon died and they spend loads of time on that. And I was like, blah, 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 blah. But but even so, the first episode, while good, was too end of the worldy. We're like, ugh, again, this hasn't got that. The the the, the tone is more fresh. So even even your dad gives it a nine point two. He says he was impressed. Nine point two. Discovery, really one of father. The best episodes. Are you Quite ill? Good for Star Trek overall. Yeah. Maybe he's ill. <laughs> goodness. 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 Uh, okay. Anyway, guys. Any super chat scores? Nope, not a one. What? 
going to end the poll, by the way. 66%. Yep, I'm convinced he's in five. Good number. Right. Well, let's look at the normalcy about scores. You have all said Scottish Nightmare 6.5, Chris 8.9, uh, Zachary 6, an okay start, Stanley 7 to 8, Matthew 8, Ozzy 8.9, but Mungo's at a 9, so she's the first one that's with me. Uh, Aeon 5, gosh, wow. Aeon, did you like season 1 then? What do you have season 1? Goodness. Uh, Marco was 6 out of 10 until the end, and I went 7. Uh, Joseph, 7.8. Ozzy gives Donnie an 8. <laughs> Bill, 8. Um, only because the barrier, the ship sequence was interesting. Uh, wow, yeah, I'm in the minority of my uh, my scoring. Wow, you guys didn't like it that much. Or like, liked it okay. Hmm. Right, fair enough. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Well, there we go. Um, yeah. yeah. So Tuesday is going to be the review of episode two, which is under the Twin Moons. Mm-hmm. Ironically, that I can't do it Monday because I'm under the single moon. Yep, it's some real life Solar reasons. Eclipse. Yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, so yeah. Um, so please join us for that. And yeah, look for content on the weekend, of course. And mm-hmm. all week next week, we have some breakdown. So. It's kind of fun to be back in New Trek a little bit. Yeah, we had fresh discussions this morning, all morning. Also, zippy small things, new things that we get to see. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so there's some fun small things. So, you know, share the word, share the Trek Yard's joy uh, out into the internets. Uh, watch the editor review because we that is our genuine, right off the bat, minutes. Minutes have happened, and then we're, you know, watching it. So that's fun. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Don't tell me Tuesday. Yeah, the review will be here on Tuesday, just like with everything else. It is the day of all day. <laughs> anyway, guys, thank you for watching. Have yourselves a fantastic weekend and enjoy your solar eclipse if you're in the path of it. Mm. I'll try to. Hopefully, it won't be overcast. Let's we'll see. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> Right. Uh, I'll see you. You'll see me. I'll see you next week, and you'll see us the weekend. Until then, he is Captain Foley. And he is Commander Crackings. Bye, guys. Bye.